Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out this day in baseball, and enjoy the game. And the starting pitchers in the first game for the New York Mets is Tom Seaver. For the San Diego Padres, it is Clay Kirby. We'll be back with the starting lineups in just one minute. Take to the country with camping and backpacking equipment from Walton's Sports Shop in Saratoga Springs. Ask Bob Walton to show you his complete selection of equipment. He has backpacks and racks in modern lightweight construction as well as construction as well as tents, especially designed for backpacking. Dunham's hiking shoes will get you off on the right foot, and every hiker or camper will want a snug, lightweight sleeping bag, canteen, mess kit, hatchet, or knife. For the real backcountry hikers, Walton's has topographical maps for virtually all of New York State, including the Adirondack Park, as well as special maps of hiking paths. Ask about their selection of compasses, too. And for those who especially like water, Walton's carries a selection of inflatable boats and rafts. For all your sporting needs, check Walton Sport Shop, Lake Avenue and Henry Street in Saratoga Springs. Walton helps sports be more fun. Stadium in New York, the Commander-in-Chief Atlantic Fleet Navy Band is poised out in center field, and the theme of the activity here on this July 4th holiday is Let's Go Navy. But right now for starting lineup, let's go Ralph Kiner. All right, Lindsey Nelson, and the umpires are taking their stations. It'll be Lee Wire at home plate, Andy Olson, the umpire at first base, Dick Stella, the umpire at second, and Ken Burkhardt will be the umpire at third. And the Navy band now entering from center field. The starting lineup for the San Diego Padres, Darrell Thomas, playing at second base, batting second and playing third, Dave Roberts, batting third and playing left field, Leron Lee, batting fourth, the first baseman, Nate Colbert, batting fifth, playing right field, Clarence Gaston, batting sixth, the center fielder, Jerry Morales, batting seventh and catching, Pat Corrales, batting eighth and playing shortstop, Enzo Hernandez, and the pitcher, Clay Kirby, batting ninth. And the commander-in-chief of the Navy Band getting set for our national anthem here at Shea Stadium. for the Mets. This broadcast comes to you through the courtesy of WHN, Store Radio, and is authorized under radio rights granted by the New York Mets solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the description and accounts of this game without the express consent of the New York Mets is prohibited. Well, the Mets have taken the field, and their starting lineup, Willie Mays in center field, leading off, batting second, the shortstop, Bud Harrelson, batting third, playing second base, Wayne Garrett. Batting fourth, playing left field, John Milner. Batting fifth, the third baseman, Jim Fergosi. 
Batting sixth at first base, Ed Cranepool. Batting seventh, playing right field, Ted Martinez. Batting eighth and catching Duffy Dyer and Tom Seaver, the pitcher, batting ninth. Once again, the Mets coming up with some more bad luck as their heavy hitter of late, Dave Marshall, who's been hitting the ball exceptionally well, playing in right field in place of Rusty Staub, has been sidelined here today. It's been diagnosed as a stomach upset. And so Dave Marshall not able to play, and Ted Martinez, who has played center field, left field, second base, shortstop, and third base for the Mets, is now playing another position. He is out in right field. Leon Jones is unable to play. His elbow's still bad. Rusty Staub unable to play because of the bad hand. Tommy Agee with a bad leg. Willie Mays is playing with a slight pull muscle, as is John Milner, the left fielder. So the Mets really being hurt here lately, but hanging on. They're only a game and a half back of the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Pirates won yesterday with a home run in the ninth inning. The Mets trailing about one and a half games. If the Pirates lose today and the Mets win two, the Mets would be three percentage points out of first place in a virtual tie. Chicago Cubs in third place, just a shade ahead of St. Louis, percentage point wise. They are both six and a half games back of the Pittsburgh Pirates. So a big doubleheader for the New York Mets on a fine day and no rain in sight, and that's a welcome relief. Tom Seaver set to go against the very strong play Kirby, and here as Seaver gets set to, set to go, Lindsey Nelson for the play-by-play. Thank you very much, Ralph Cannon. Hello again, everybody. Tom Seaver now, for five consecutive games, has given up runs in the first inning. So he is facing the Padres in the first inning here. He has a record of ten wins and four losses. Darrell Thomas is at the plate, and here's the pitch. It's outside for a ball. Thomas hitting 246, batting left. He has one home run and 14 runs batted in. He was sent down to Salt Lake City for 11 days for disciplinary reasons. He's back. Just been brought back. Here's the pitch to Thomas. It's in for a called strike. One and one now. Dave Roberts is on deck. He's the rookie third baseman. Bob Skinner is the coach at third for the Padres. Dave Garcia is on the lines at first. The Padres are managed by former Brooklyn and Los Angeles Dodger Don Zimmer, who was one of the original Mets back in 1962. Now, 1-1 one, one delivery. Bunted back to Seaver. He takes it for the out. That ball was bunted so hard it was a line drive back to the mound. And Seaver took it on the fly for the foot off. Dave Roberts coming up. He was their number one draft choice from the University of Oregon. Dave Roberts is hitting 261. He has one homer and eight runs batted in. Not to be confused with the pitcher, Dave Roberts, who was traded from the San Diego Padres to the Houston Astros. This Roberts is an infielder, and he's a right-hand batter. Tom Seaver takes the sign from Duffy Dyer. Has a breaking pitch in for a called strike. Against the Padres this year, Seaver has won one, lost one. His lifetime record against them is ten wins and one loss. Now the pitch. Breaks way on outside. Seaver defeated the Padres with a complete game 5-1 to one at San Diego on April 26. He allowed seven hits. He walked none, struck out six. Lost to the Padres 6-2. to two. Year at Shea on May 6. Allowed ten hits and six runs. He worked eight innings. Walked two, struck out eight. Pitch is low for a ball. Starting play today. Gary Nolan of the Cincinnati Reds, who has won 11 games and lost two, is the only 11-game winner in the National League. Seaver has won 10 and lost four. It's a swing and a foul ball. It's back and out of play, and the count's 2-2. Leron Lee is on deck. In the second game here today, it'll be Gary Gentry going for the New York Mets against Mike Caldwell of the San Diego Padres. Swing and a broken back ground ball to the right side. Seaver goes for the back. Crane for the ball, and the play is made. 3 1. Pulled off liftily as Robert slid in the first. Good ball off the broken bat. Dribbled to the right side. When Seaver saw Crane Poo make his move for the ball, Seaver then sped for the back. Rainpool had to fire the ball over, but Seaver was there in time, and two men are out. Lee Ron Lee, hitting 311. He has seven homers and 25 runs batted in. He came to the Padres in the St. Louis Cardinals, and he's been a big bat in the Padre lineup. Here's a foul ball back and out of play. Padres are outfitted in their gold uniform. Mission goal, they call it. Now the pitch 
And it's high for a ball. 1-1. One, one. They've toned down those uniforms, the appearance of them, just a slight bit by going back to the dark brown caps and dark brown helmets. They first brought out this new look this year. It was all gold. Here's a 1-1 one, one delivery. Curves in for a call strike. It's 1-2. and two. The Mets have an infield of Ed Cranefool at first, Wayne Garrett at second, Bud Harrelson at shortstop, Jim Fregosi at third. Now the 1-2 delivery. Swung on and missed. Struck him out, and Seaver gets out of the first inning unscathed for the first time in six starts. Nothing across. And in the middle of the first inning, the score is the Padres nothing and the Mets coming to bat. Many people today are finding it hard to find a home within their price range. Well, here's a tip. See the folks at Holiday Manor Mobile Homes and find out what they can offer. They can supply a mobile home to suit your budget. You pick the interior decor, and you can even custom plan the floor plan to suit your requirements. Holiday Manor can help you find a home you can afford and one that's designed to your needs. They represent a full line of mobile homes, including modulars and regular 12-wide homes. They're fully staffed and fully equipped. Fully trained service crew can set up your home and keep it in top repair. When the question of financing comes up, Holiday Manor is ready to help. They can arrange virtually unlimited numbers of loans, and they'll work with you to keep the down payment and the monthly charges within your budget. So visit Holiday Manor Mobile Homes. You'll get the best buy for you in a mobile home at Holiday Manor. Now with two locations, Route 50 between Boston Spa and Saratoga, and one mile north of the Latham Traffic Circle. this year and 12 runs batted in. Clay Kirby is 24 years of age. He's won five games and lost seven. His lifetime record against the Mets is three wins, or rather four wins and four losses. Last year against the Mets, Kirby won three and lost one. Here's the pitch now to Willie Mays, and it's high and tight for a ball. Bud Harrelson is on deck. Mays was not in the lineup originally posted by manager Yogi Berra here today. But when Dave Marshall turned up ill, Mays was inserted. That pitch is high for a ball. It's 2-0. Oh. On the coaching lines, Eddie Yost is at third and Sheriff Robinson at first for the Mets. Pat Corrales, the regular catcher these days, since being brought over from Cincinnati in the Bob Barton deal. This pitch curves in there for a call strike as Mays took it all the way, moved up in the batter's box and taking the pitch. Willie's been playing with a pulled hamstring. He was removed for a pinch runner day before yesterday after delivering a pinch base hit. Swinging a foul ball back and out of play. It's 2-2. Bud Harrelson kneeling in the on-deck circle. Warm and sunny day here at Shea Stadium in New York for this July 4th doubleheader. the 2-2. Fired low and it's out full at 3-2. So we do have a lot of baseball to be played on a beautiful afternoon and if you're in the vicinity and are so inclined, we have plenty of room for you. So come on out. Kirby taking a sign. Offers the payoff pitch. Foul back and out of play. In the National League, there's only one other game scheduled for afternoon, and that is the St. Louis Cardinals at Cincinnati. And guess what? They're being held up in Cincinnati because of rain. Lee Wire is the umpire behind the plate here today. Andy Olson at first, Dick Stello at second, and crew chief Ken Burkhardt at third. That pitch is in for a foul strike three, a breaking pitch, and Mays is the strikeout victim. The first for Clay Kirby. Shortstop, number three. Bud Harrelson, switch hitting shortstop. He's hitting 206. He has one homer and 12 runs batted in. He's been struggling at the plate of late. As his batting average has shrunk down to the 206. 
That pitch is inside low. Oddly enough, and the latest figure is released. Bud Harrelson still is leading in the balloting for the shortstop position on the National League's All-Star team. He was the starting shortstop last year. Don Kessinger of the Cubs is a close second in the balloting. That's in for a call strike. It's 1-1. The Pirates have won 43 games and lost 25. The Mets have won 42 and lost 27. San Diego has won 24 and lost 46. They're 19 games out behind the division-leading Cincinnati Reds in the West. Ball is pointed up into the air at second base. Thomas waits and makes the catch. Well, we saw Thomas try to bunt his way on and line out the receiver. Now we have seen Harrelson try to bunt his way on and pop up to second base to Thomas. Two away, Wayne Garrett's the batter. Wayne batting number three in the batting order here today. He has hit safely in four straight games. Has an average of 189, one homer and ten runs batted in. We're in the bottom half of the first inning of the first game. No score. Here's a pitch in for a call strike. At third base, Dave Roberts up to the edge of the grass. Quinn is ripping the flag out toward right. Here's a swing and a ground ball back off the bare hand. Recovers, so it's the first not in time, and Wayne Garrett is on. Now, Kirby on the follow through, he's a right hander on the follow through, was coming off on the first base side. As the ball went back through the box, he just stabbed at it with the pitching hand and deflected it out towards short. It came to stop on the grass. He picked it up, played it on, but not in time, and it scored as a base hit for Wayne Garrett. John Milner's up, the hammer is hit safely in eight of his last nine games. He's been playing with a muscle pull. He's hitting 295. He has eight home runs and 19 runs batted in. Kirby sets and checks. Here's the pitch inside low for a ball. The outfield alignment. Leron Lee in left. Jerry Morales in center. And Clarence Gaston in right. Sets and checks. Pitches it on the ground, a big hop to second. Thomas has it. He goes on to Colbert, and the side is out. No runs are hit, no errors, and one left. At the end of an inning, the score is Padres nothing, Mets nothing. Personal service you can trust. There's only one place in town where you can still find this is true. Ernst Brothers. For three generations, Ernst Brothers has served the Saratoga County homeowner, and that tells it all. For your aluminum siding work this summer, call George Ernst, and he'll uh, give you a free estimate. Dependability speaks for itself, and after three generations of hard and dependable work, Ernst Brothers is ready to serve you. So phone 584-1859 for Ernst Brothers. Can't you just see those kids in that pool? But they can't see you. They're blind. Come on, kids. Into the pool. Red Cross volunteer Mary Ann Ryan is teaching them to swim. She's one of thousands who give their time and love and all kinds of services all over the country. Maybe you don't have the hours to give the Red Cross. But think, where do you fit in? The American Red Cross. People like you helping people like you. Going now to the top half of the second inning, and Nate Colbert's coming up to lead it off. Nate Colbert is hitting 223. He has 15 home runs, and he has 46 runs batted in. Big right hand power hitter facing Tom Seaver. Here's Seaver's pitch, and it's low. Cardinals in Cincinnati held up because of rain. Scipio Spinks 5 and 4 against Ross Grimsley, 5 and 2. Cardinals have won seven in a row and 14 of their last 15. Here's the fastball low. It's 2 and 0. The Chicago Cubs and the Atlanta Braves play a twinite doubleheader. Cubs have lost 10 of their last 13 games. It's a breaking pitch in for a strike. It's 2 and 1. Los Angeles Dodgers, who have lost four in a row and 12 of 16, are at Montreal tonight. The Giants are at Philadelphia tonight. 
Giants have won eight of their last ten. Phillies have lost 35 of their last 45. Here's a pitch in for a call strike and another breaking pitch. It's 2-2. Pittsburgh Pirates are at Houston. A single game in the Astrodome tonight. The American League, the New York Yankees, who won five in a row, are at Oakland against the A's. Ted Williams, Texas Rangers are at Cleveland. The Indians have lost eight straight. Here's a swing and a miss. Cleveland used the slider to achieve his second strikeout. One away, and Zeno Gaston is coming up. Gaston's playing right field, hitting 245. Two homers and eight runs batted in. Minnesota Twins are at Fenway Park against the Red Sox. Red Sox have won four in a row, and tonight the Baltimore Orioles are at Chicago against the White Sox. The Detroit Tigers in Kansas City play tonight in Kansas City. Pitch is low and away. And the Milwaukee Brewers are at California against the Angels. Right here, no score. And the Padres are batting in the top of the second inning. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Fastball, and it's low. 2-0. Jerry Morales has moved out on deck for the Padres. Pitch. Swung on and foul back. It's out of play. Last time the Padres were here, they took two of three from the New York Mets, and the Mets had to come from behind the last inning to achieve a victory in the getaway game of the set. Overall, this year, the Mets have won four, the Padres have won two. That's on the outside corner for a call strike, and it's 2 2. Nash Gaston not particularly pleased with the call of umpire Lee Wire. Here is the 2-2. Curveball, and he's called out on strike. Got him on the outside corner. Three strikeouts for Seaver. Two away, Jerry Morales is the batter. Morales is hitting 279. He has two homers and eight runs batted in. You may recall that it was against the San Diego Padres that Tom Seaver achieved his record number of strikeouts, 19 in a single game here at Shea. Struck out the last ten in a row. Here's a swing and a high pop to right center field. Second baseman Wayne Garrett is out back pedaling, loses it for a moment, and one hands the ball in a circus catch. Oh boy, Wayne Garrett had a little trouble following the flight of the ball and had to thrust the glove out at the last moment to pull it in. But the side is out, nothing across. In the middle of the second inning, the score is the Padres nothing and the Mets nothing. Love us all, love just one. Don't miss love, you miss the fun. Love us all, love just one. Don't miss love, Find someone and share your love. Find someone and dare to love. Find someone. Fergosi is coming up now to lead off for the New York Mets. He has a four-game hitting streak going. Fergosi is batting 254. He has four homers and 22 runs batted in this year. Closing right hand to Clay Kirby as the Mets bat in the bottom of the second inning. Mike Caldwell will pitch the second game for Padres and Gary Gentry for the Mets. That's in for a call strike. Ed Cranebull has moved up on deck. Tomorrow it'll be John Madlack tomorrow night for the Mets and Steve Arlen will go for the San Diego Padres. Fastball, it's a little low and it's one and one. Padres are three games back of the fifth place San Francisco Giants in the standings of the Western Division of the National League. Here's a swing and a foul ball to the right side, out of play. One 
and two to Fergusi. Now the pitch. Foul ball back and out. So it calls it one and two. Nobody on and nobody out. Patrick sends out the sign. And the pitch. Fouled off and out of play. Right off his leg. Rebounds out onto the grass of the infield. Padres in. Followed by the Dodgers. Followed by the Giants. And then the Mets go on the road out to San Diego. To Los Angeles and to San Francisco. That will take them right up to the All-Star break. 18 consecutive games against the Padres, the Dodgers, and the Giants. Nine here and nine on the coast. The let up outside, it's 2-2. Here's the 2-2 delivery. Swung on and fouled off with a breaking pitch. It's out of play to the left side. A double header set for yesterday in Montreal. New York Mets came back early last evening. By the time they arrived in New York, the rain had stopped here. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Swung on and missed. He tried to check it, but had it around for a strikeout. That's the second. Credited to Kirby. One away at Ed Crane pulls the batter. He's hitting 211. He has four homers and 13 runs out of it. We pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. 102.3 in your FM dial. In Saratoga Springs, New York, the voice of Mets Baseball, this is WKAJ FM. This is Lindsey Nelson with Ralph Counter and Bob Murphy at Chase Stadium in New York. Mets and Padres in a doubleheader here on July 4th. Craneville's at the plate. Swings and sends a fly ball in the short center. Coming past is Morales. He gets there, calls, and makes the basket catch. Jerry Morales coming straight in from center field. Two away, and Teddy Martinez will be the batter. He's hit safely in nine of his last 11 games. Martinez is hitting 276 for the year with six runs batted in. He's played second base, he's played shortstop, he's played third base, he's played left field, center field, right field. Now here's the pitch. Low for a ball. We were saying that the New York Mets Play the West Coast teams up to the All-Star break. After the All-Star break, the Mets resume in Pittsburgh with a twin-eye doubleheader against the Pirates. They don't return to Shea Stadium then until Saturday, July 29th. It's a 7:05 night game against the Expos. That pitch is a little low, and it's 2-0 and now with Duffy Dyer moved up on deck. Rusty Staub is down in the bullpen. And uh, he has a bat, and he's in a little pepper game down there, just seeing if he can swing it, and if the contact hurts the wrist, there's a swing, and a foul ball, it's off and out of play, two and one. Rusty Staub is hopeful that he'll soon be back in the lineup, and so is the Met management hopeful, because it's his bat that is missed the most out of that lineup these days. He was the cleanup batter. was hitting 298 with nine homers. He went out of action. There's a swing and a miss. It's two strikes. Bob appears, as we look at him here, to be swinging the bat fairly loosely, making contact just in a little short cover game. Now the 2-2. Curveball, and it's fouled off. Out of play, and the count holds at 2-2. That's nothing, Padres nothing in the bottom of the second inning. First time this year that the New York Mets have faced Clay Kirby. Last year he 
was tough on them. He won three games over the Mets last season. Here's the 2-2 delivery. Fastball low. So it's out full now at 3-2 to Martinez. Rusty Staub has apparently removed that um, bandage he's been wearing on the wrist. Here's the payoff pitch. Get on the ground. One off to third. Speared there by Robert to play to first. And he beat it for a base hit. Martinez using his speed to leg out of base hit. Dave Roberts speared the smash to keep it from going through. But by the time he could get up and throw, Martinez got the first ahead of his relay. So Martinez has the second hit the Mets have off Clay Kirby. He's on with two men out. And Duffy Dyer is the batter. He's hitting 278 for the year. Dyer has five home runs and 15 runs batted in. <laughs> Nate Colbert holds against the runner. Martinez at first. The pitch gets in the dirt, comes in on a big hop to Pat Corrales, the catcher. It's ball one. Seaver has moved up on deck. Kirby again looks for the sign. Outfield defense shaded to the right against Duffy Dyer. There's a swing and a miss. It's one and one. Martinez leads at first base. Throw over. He's back in time. So, count holds at one and one to Duffy Dyer at the plate with two men out. Kirby has struck out two and walked none so far. This pitch breaks a little low off the outside corner. It's two and one. Martinez left to start on the pitch. First, Martinez again is back safely. 2-1 pitch. He might go. He has excellent speed. Others had the same thought. That's why they threw to first base. Not going. The pitch is high. It's 3-1 and one now. Duffy Dyer looks down to the sign man, Eddie Yost, at third to see if anything is on on a 3-1 pitch. Swung on and foul back, so now the count is out full at 3-2. This means an automatic start for Martinez on this next pitch. Two men out, runner at first in the full count. There goes Martinez. Swing and a miss, struck him out to retire the side. Three strikeouts for Kirby. No runs are hit, no errors, and one left at the end of two innings. The score is the Padres nothing, the Mets nothing. Monroe of the New York Knicks can do everything on a basketball court. Shoot, dribble, pass, fast break, you name it, the Pearl can do it. It's a skill based on careful thinking, fast reflexes, and something else. This is Earl Monroe of the New York Knicks. As a professional basketball player, I'm very much aware of the importance of good vision. To play well, I have to be able to see well. Anticipation is the key to good moves. I watch my opponent. I look for him to commit himself, and then I move fast. Good vision is important to me. Whether you are a player or a sports fan, good vision plays a big role in your enjoyment of any game. 
Be sure you're seeing as well as you should. Have regular examinations by a vision care specialist. That's good advice from the American Optometric Association and me, Earl Monroe. Remember, life is worth seeing. We're going to the third inning. First game of a July 4th doubleheader here at Shea between the Mets and Padres. There is no score. And here for the play-by-play, Ralph Tyner. Thank you, Lindsay Nelson. And once again, hi, everybody. Pat Carellis will lead off for the Padres. Padres very happy to get Pat Carellis as a fine receiver. He's hitting at 175 for the year. Right-hand batter, veteran catcher. Your legs and the first pitch has popped up. A slider hit high in the air back at second. Out there is Harrelson. He is under the ball. And he makes the catch. The last two men have been retired on one pitch by Tom Seaver. He has pitched to seven, got them all. That'll bring up the shortstop, Enzo Hernandez. Hernandez hitting 189. Hernandez has eight extra base hits. They've all been doubles. He has driven in seven runs. And the first pitch, a high fastball. It's ball one. Seaver has a record against the Padres of ten wins and one loss. The one loss coming this year. He had won ten straight against the Padres before losing. Pitch back, a breaking ball. Enzo Hernandez with a wild swing and the count one ball, one strike. And the 1-1 delivery. Fast ball just off the plate above the knees. Two balls, one strike. And the 2-1 pitch. It's on the outside corner this time, 2-2. Two two. Seaver coming back with that fast ball and catching right over the black part of the plate. Home plate is edged around by a black rubber part. Although that is not considered to be in the strike zone. Here's a pitch fouled off. It's two and two. Players always refer to a close pitch as over the black part. And Seaver's 2 2 delivery. He misses with a slider. Low outside, three and two. So the first full count for Tom Seaver as he works to the shortstop, Enzo Hernandez, and the pitch. Swung on and foul tipped into Duffy Dyer's club, and Seaver has his four strikeout. Got him with a fastball. It brings up Clay Kirby, the pitcher. Clay has been up 36 times. He's had three base hits. Batting ninth position, the pitcher, number 43, Clay Kirby. Number 43. The outfield condition here, for the first time in a long time, it is dry. It has been almost underwater. And the outfielder is very happy about the fact they have some traction. Here's a pitch for a swing and a miss, strike one. In fact, this field condition is in probably the best shape it's been in all year. The one strike pitch. It is high and outside, one and one. It's raining in Cincinnati. Cardinals are scheduled there. Next pitch back. Hit right back to Seaver, and he takes a comebacker on one hop, throws the first base, and he has retired his first nine batters. And the score at the end of two and a half innings, the Padres nothing, the Mets nothing. Are you in casual dress? Want a wonderful restaurant to eat and relax in? Visit the Club Circle Restaurant and Motel. From soup to antipasto for two. The menu is sure to include something you'll like. Have the time of your life. Visit the Winstons at the Club Circle Restaurant and Motel out Crescent Avenue on Lake Lonely. What a welcome pleasure. This is E.G. Marshall for the American Optometric Association. All of us marvel at the wonder of television, but we seldom think about the far greater miracle that enables us to enjoy it, our vision. If you're not seeing as well as you should, your vision specialist is ready to help you. Remember, life is worth seeing. Well, we're going to the bottom of the third. 
And the first batter for the Mets will be Tom Seaver. So far in the ball game, Padres no runs, no hits, no errors. The Mets no runs, two hits, and no errors. The Mets twice have had two out base hits. But Clay Kirby was equal to the occasion, retiring the next batter. Kirby came to the ball game with a record of five and seven. He has no decisions against the Mets this year. Out of the bullpen for the Mets, Rusty Staub is hitting Pepper. He is dying to get back in the lineup, but the right wrist, the bottom hand of the bat, is still sore. Seaver the batter, he's been up 39 times. He's had seven hits, he's hit two home runs. He also has had two doubles, so he's had four extra base hits in his seven base hit total. It'll be Tom Seaver, Willie Mays, and Bud Harrelson for Clay Kirby as his first three batters here in the bottom of the third. And Kirby's first pitch, a hard fastball that's in the strike zone, strike one call. Kirby with a hard fastball, a very good slider, and a curve. He is one of the tough right-handers in the leg, the one-strike pitch. Comes back with a breaking ball and misses low and away. One ball, one strike. Sun shining brightly, and what a welcome sight. Breeze blowing in from left field. It's just a shade cool, but a perfect day for a doubleheader. Now a slider swung on a miss. Actually foul tip. His home plate umpire, Lee Wire, gives a sign. One and two. Umpires are working in their suit coats on this mild day. Andy Olsen at first, Dick Stello at second, Ken Burkhardt at third. One two pitch, again the curve, and again it's outside. Two and two the count. Kirby's pitching Seaver as though he were a tough batter, which he is. Going to the breaking balls. Now the right hander back at two two. Pitch is grounded out toward third, and it is fielded in foul territory. Seaver down the line will have to come on back. Dave Roberts, the number one draft choice in the United States out of college this year, turned in a fantastic fielding stop against Ted Martinez, but couldn't throw him out. He appears to be a fine fielding third baseman. Trying to make the jump from college ball to the major leagues, and it's tough. And again, the 2-2 pitch, and Seaver swings and misses, and Kirby gets his fourth strikeout. That'll bring up Willie Mays, who struck out his first time up. <laughs> Willie worked the count to three balls and two strikes and was called out on strikes as he looked at a slider his first time up. Mays hitting 236. He's had 39 walks to go with his 30 base hits. He's been on 69 times in the first pitch he called strike. Strike one. Well, he has been in 46 games, so his on-base percentage is exceptionally good. Well, he has hit three home runs this year, has a total of 6.49 in his career. Next pitch, a fastball swung on a miss. Strike two. Two strike count. Kirby into the windup. And the pitch, high and inside, it rocks Willie back out of the batter's box, one and two. Two strike count, Kirby into the windup. And the pitch, high and inside, it rocks Willie back out of the batter's box, one and two. the next delivery. Mays takes high and inside again. This one very close. It's two balls and two strikes. Before this year, Willie Mays had a home run percentage of a home run every 16.1 times up. Hank Aaron has a home run percentage going to this year, 16.3. Babe Ruth, of course, by far the best with 11.8 ratio of home runs to times at bat. 2-2 two -two pitch is hit through the middle, not hard. Going over to field the ball is Hernandez and the sort of first in time for the out. 
That'll bring up Bud Harrelson. Bud tried to bunt his way on and popped the ball up to the second baseman. That was his first time up. Bud batting at 205. He leads the club and walks with 40. Harrelson has had 50 base hits, so he has been on base 90 times in his first 67 games. the first pitch to Harrelson. Batting left hand and line to left center field. There's going to be a base hit. Morales over to field it on one hop. Harrelson makes the turn and holds it first. So once again, the Mets for the third time in the ball game, and this is the third inning, have a runner on first base with two men out as a result of a base hit. That'll bring up Wayne Garrett, who singled his first time up. Single off the glove of the pitcher, Clay Kirby. Harrelson has hit, been hitting the ball much better lately. Garrett also has a great on-base percentage. He's been on over 38% of the time with 23 walks. And he takes a fastball to the knee as a call strike. Garrett has had 14, 15 hits. He's been on 38 times in his first 35 ball game. Throw to first base, chases Harrelson back. Bud leads the club in stolen bases with five. Play Kirby from the set position. Harrelson running, the pitch taken inside. The throw by Perales is high, and Harrelson has his sixth stolen base. Harrelson has had six stolen bases and eight tries. And the Mets have a runner in scoring position for the first time in the ball game, And that is the first runner at second base in this game. One ball, one strike count on Wayne Garrett. Garrett has driven in ten runs. He's batting an even 200. And the 1-1 pitch. Harrelson swings at a fastball. Doesn't make contact. It's 1-2. and two. <laughs> Kirby taking the signs from Pat Corrales. And here comes the 1-2 delivery. It's fouled back out of play. Again, a fastball. So the count remains at one and two. Home plate umpire Lee Wire missed the pitcher throwing the ball back and it's fielded by second base umpire Dick Stello. Once again, the signs go out for the one-two pitch. It's on its way and the pitch a curve. It misses high, two and two. Carlson, the short lead at second, checking out the second baseman who's way over in a deep in the hole position at second. The shortstop, Hernandez, is back of Harrelson. And the pitch, again high, and it's ball three. Full count to Wayne Garrett. The on-deck batter, John Milner. Kirby has not walked the batter in this ball game. He has struck out four. Working with two men out, we're in the bottom of the third, no score. And the 3-2 pitch. Change up, it's ball four. That pitch just missing. So Garrett works out his 24th walk. And the Mets have runners at first and second with John Milner coming up. Milner grounded out to the second baseman his first time up. He's batting 293 with eight home runs and 19 runs batted in. John has hit an eight of his last nine ball games. the Mets trying to break through here in this scoreless ball game. Here's the first pitch to Milner. He takes high, ball one. And Pat Corrales goes out to the mound now to talk it over with his pitcher, Clay Kirby. Well, the Cubs and St. Louis Cardinals are in a virtual tie for third place, six and a half games out. 
games back of the Mets. Mets trailing Pittsburgh by a game and one half. If they can win two here today and Pittsburgh could lose, the Mets would then be in a virtual tie for first. Three points back of the Pittsburgh Pirates. One ball, no strikes. Morales back to give the signs. Here's the pitch. Milner takes high again. A fastball just above the letters. Two balls and no strikes. In the Western Division, Cincinnati leads Houston by one half game. And the Dodgers by six and a half. Two and oh, the count on John Milner. Two men away. Runners at first and second. Here's the pitch. And it's high. And it's ball three. Three balls, no strikes. And the on-deck batter, Jim Fergosi, gets up and takes a few practice swings. Milner checks out to see whether or not he'll be hitting. He has been hitting on 3-0 on many occasions. Here's the pitch. And he takes a strike. It's low and inside on the strike side, and it's 3-1. and one. Milner was in any position. He was starting to swing. What a tough pitch to hit, so he laid off. That puts it at 3-1 and one with runners at first and second. And Kirby's next delivery. Milner takes ball four. The bases are loaded. And here comes Don Zimmer, the manager of the Padres, out to the mound to talk with his pitcher as action starts up in the bullpen for San Diego. A two-out single by Bud Harrelson, a stolen base, a walk to Wayne Garrett, and a 3-2 pitch, and a walk to John Milner, and a 3-1 pitch, and the base is loaded. In the bullpen, Don Ross warming up. I think that Gary Ross warming up. Don Ross was formerly with the Mets. Gary Ross, a right-hander. Zimmer back to the bench and Jim Fergosi stepping in the batter's box. He was struck out his first time up. Fergosi batting 252 with four home runs, 22 RBI. Jim brought a four-game hitting streak into this ball game. And now with the bases loaded, the first pitch, and it's a curveball over a called strike. Kirby with his first test in this ball game. The pitch back to the plate in there. All strike two. So Kirby out in front with a two-strike down against Jim Fergosi. Fergosi out of the batter's box. Now back in. He's got his back to the wall. Kirby reading the sign. Now into the windup and the two-strike delivery. It is high, a breaking ball, one and two. Harrelson at third, Garrett at second, Miller at first, and the one-two pitch, again a breaking ball, and again it is just high. Two balls, two strikes. Deck batter for the Mets at Greenville. And here's the 2 2 pitch. It is hit hard, but foul on the third base side, wiped right by the coach Eddie Yost. The count remains at 2 and 2. Last year, Kirby, a 15 game winner for the last place, San Diego Ball Club. This year, he's won five and lost seven. Lifetime, he has won 37, lost 56. He is regarded as one of the top right-handers in baseball. Now, time called. The ball is left on the playing field, the foul ball. So, time called as home plate umpire Lee Wire says, get it out. We don't need two balls that can be in play. Time back in. Wind up and pitch. He misses, low and away with a breaking ball, and that fills the count to three and two. That means the runners will be going with the pitch, and we'll see whether or not Clay Kirby works from the set position or from the windup. It's down to the wire now. Three and two, bases loaded. Still no score. Two men out, bottom of the third. 
Kirby is going to work from the stretch position. The crowd getting up. The signs are out, and here comes the 3-2 pitch. It is way outside, and it is ball four. Jim Fergosi started to swing, and now an argument as John Zimmer comes out to argue with home plate umpire Lee Wire. Wire asked the first base umpire Andy Olson whether he had swung or not, and Olson said no. And Don Zimmer throws his hands up in the air in disgust and then makes a motion as he took a full swing. And it looks like Zimmer is out of the ball game. Don Zimmer is being ejected from the ball game as the Mets take a one nothing lead. Then three walks in a row, and on the last pitch, a disputed call, and a pitch that might have been a foot outside. Fergosi started to swing, and it was deemed that he held up, and Zimmer still arguing the call. Carlson scoring from third base. Zimmer started out of the dugout. I think the thought occurred to him that once he took a step out there, he knew he was automatically out of the ball game, which he is. If he comes out to argue a call on a, a swing or a ball or a strike, he's out. I think he was just overcome. He couldn't resist because he stormed on out there directly. And he, of course, was out from the start. Zimmer still indicating that he had a full swing of the ball. Again, he takes another swing as he walks away. And then he waves at home plate umpire Lee Wire and walks back to the bench. He is out of the ball game. Now Zimmer picking up the bat and indicating that he swung at the ball as he walks down towards the dugout tunnel and he goes out of sight. That puts up Ed Greenpool. The bases still loaded. The Mets leading one nothing. Still two men out. Greenpool flat out the center field his first time up. Here's the pitch. And he takes low and it's ball one. That'll give Fergosi a run batted in. It's 23rd of the year. Garrett moving to third base. Miller to second. A 1-0 cat to Greenpool. Greenpool batting 2-0-9. And the 1-0 pitch. It's in for a call strike. One ball, one strike. Gary Ross still throwing in the bullpen for the Padres. Well, the Mets lost the ball game to Montreal on four walks in the bottom of the ninth inning. Now they have picked up a run on a base hit and three walks. The 1-1 pitch. Greenpool takes the strike and it's one and two. Last ball over the outside part of the plate about belt high. Bull has driven in 13 runs this year. He's been up 134 times. Next pitch is swung on and foul back to camp stays at one and two. One thing about Don, he can get hot. Once again, the signs are out. And Kirby with his one-two pitch. And now he backs off. He doesn't want that set. So time is called. Pat Corrales sending out a new set of signs. Kirby wants to throw his pitch. He's got it. And here it is. It is. Change up, but it's outside. Two balls and two strikes. Two balls, two strikes. The windup and the next delivery to Crane Pool. High and away, and it's ball three. And once again, a full count. That once again means the runners will be moving, and Kirby will probably work from the set position again. Garrett's at third base, Miller at second, Fergosi at first. Home plate umpire Lee Wire indicates the count. Three balls, two strikes. Kirby goes to the stretch position. The runners go. Here's the pitch. It's high. Ball four. And the Mets have their second run. That pitch not even close. And that looks like the last pitch that Clay Kirby is going to throw. It is that Roger Craig, the pitching coach, comes out to the mound. So Kirby, who has had great stuff, suddenly losing control and walking four batters in a row. And the Mets taking a 2 nothing lead after a two-out single by Bud Harrelson. And we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network.
FM Radio in Saratoga Springs, New York, bringing you New York Mets baseball. This is WKAJ 102.3 in your FM dial. Ralph Kiner along with Lindsey Nelson and Bob Murphy and now Clay Kirby stalking off the mound. He is still upset with the call against Jim Fergosi and that's the way the game of baseball is. If that call had been a strike, he would have been out of the ball game. No run scored. I mean, still in the ball game and no run scored. Now he's out of it and Gary Ross is coming in. Gary Ross is making his 26th appearance. They have all been in relief. He has relieved three times against the men. He has a record of one win and one loss. So while he comes in to warm up, let's check out the schedule and the games in progress with Lindsey Nelson. All right, Ralph Conner, in the National League, there's only one other game that is scheduled for afternoon here on July 4th. That's the St. Louis Cardinals at Cincinnati, and they are still delayed because of rain in Cincinnati. It's Scipio Sphinx, the hurl for the Cardinals, he's 5-4, and four, and Ross Grimsley for Cincinnati, he's 5-2. and two. Now, the Chicago Cubs and the Atlanta Braves are ticketed for a twilight doubleheader. It wasn't a scheduled doubleheader, but occasioned by an earlier rainout. This doubleheader here at Shea is the only scheduled doubleheader in the Major League. The Los Angeles Dodgers are at Montreal tonight. San Francisco Giants are at Philadelphia tonight. Pittsburgh Pirates are at Houston also tonight. In the American League, the New York Yankees are at Oakland. The Yanks have won five in a row. In the middle of the second inning, it is Ted Williams, Texas Rangers, nothing. Cleveland, nothing. Rich Hand against Mike Kilkenny. Minnesota Twins are at Fenway Park against the Boston Red Sox, who won four in a row. Ray Corbin, 4-0 for the Twins. Lynn McLaughlin, 0-1 for Boston. The Baltimore Orioles are at Chicago against the White Sox tonight. The Detroit Tigers are at Kansas City against the Royals tonight. The Milwaukee Brewers are at California against the Angels tonight. We're set to go here again and again. Here's Ralph Kiner. All right, Lindsey Nelson and Ted Martinez will be the batter. The base is still loaded, still two men out. Ted batted in the second inning, had an infield hit on a smash to third. Gary Ross has pitched two and two-thirds innings against the Mets so far this year. He's given up three hits, one run. He has no decisions, either one or lost. And here's the first pitch by the right-hander. It's in for a call strike. Martinez, the eighth batter to bat. The Mets have had only one hit in the inning, but there have been four walks, and they lead two to nothing. Martinez has hit in ten of his last twelve ball games, batting 281. And the one-strike pitch. Way outside, a curveball, low and outside, one ball, one strike. Miller at third base, Fergosi at second. Graham Poole at first. Run batted in for Graham Poole on the bases loaded walk, his 14th of the year. And here's the 1-1 delivery. It's a fastball outside, two balls, one strike. Kirby, credited with two and two-thirds innings of work, charged with two runs. He allowed three, hit, struck out two, walked four. I think that struck out three, walked four. And the two-one pitch. It is hit back to the second baseman. Fielded there by Darrell Thomas. He goes to the shortstop for the force play at second base to retire the side. In the inning, the Mets send eight to the plate, score two runs on one hit. There were no errors. Four walks and three men left on. And the score at the end of three. The Mets two, the San Diego Padres, nothing. How's your golf game? Would a new set of clubs help? Hi, this is Bob Walton with a good deal for you golfers. How about a Wilson Walker Cup set of golf clubs consisting of one, three, and four woods and the three through nine irons and a putter? This is regularly priced at $90. But come pick one up for $69.95. Also, if you take advantage of this special, we'll throw in three of those famous K-28 Wilson golf balls. Also, check us for golf shoes, bags, and carts. That's Walton Sports Shop, Lake Avenue, Saratoga Springs, New York. We're going.
going now to the top of the fourth inning. The Mets leading two to nothing as a result of two runs in the bottom of the third. And the first batter for the Padres will be their leadoff batter, Darrell Thomas. Darrell tried to bunt his way on and line the ball right back at Seaver on the mound. His first time up. Thomas batting 245. And Seaver's first pitch, low and inside the ball. Seaver has pitched to nine batters, struck out four, walked none. Through his first three innings of work. The 1 0 pitch catches the inside corner and the count 1 and 1. And the right hander's next pitch, a curve swung on a miss. Good pitch. Right on the inside corner, breaking right on the hands of the second baseman, Darrell Thomas. Thomas has been up 200 times this year. He's had. 49 hits and a pitch for a ball. It's two and two. Next pitch is swung on a miss, and Seaver has his fifth strikeout. That will bring up Dave Roberts. Dave was out on a good play on a ball hit out in the hole at first base, fielded by Crane Bull. Seaver had to cover at first base and made the play as he just beat. Roberts to the bag. Roberts hitting 258. And he fouls off the first pitch, strike one. That's leading 2 0. One man out, top of the fourth inning. Seaver's next pitch, a curve but high, and it's 1 and 1. Roberts has hit one major league home run. He's had 23 base hits. And he's had nine doubles. He takes inside, and it's two and one. He's off to a fine start after graduating from college in June. This is his 23rd game. He's never played in the minors. The 2-1 pitch. Seaver with a fastball gets a strike as he fouls it back out of play. Two balls, two strikes. And the next pitch again fouled off, again a fastball. Now remains at two balls and two strikes. And again the 2-2 pitch. Her ball popped up in the shallow right. Going back is Garrett. The glasses are down. He calls for the ball, and he makes the catch. That'll bring up Leron Lee. Leron was struck out his first time up. Seaver got him with a slider. Lee hitting at 309 for the year. He has seven home runs, 25 RBI. He's hit 15 doubles, four triples. He is the most productive of the San Diego Padres. Acquired from the St. Louis Cardinals. First pitch, a fastball high and away. It's ball one. Mets leading 2 nothing, And a pitch way outside. A changeup missing. Two balls, no strikes. And the 2-0 delivery. Outside and high, ball three, and the first time Seaver has been behind three balls and no strikes. He went to a 3-2 count on Hernandez in the third inning and struck him out. 3-0 pitch. High, ball four, and Lee walks in four pitches, and that's the first Padre base runner. That'll bring up the dangerous Nate Colbert, who has struck out his first time up. Colbert leads the club in... Home runs with 15. He has 46 RBIs and a 2.22 average. And Seaver's pitch. Curveball hit deep to left, but foul. It's out of the ballpark a long way, but foul by about 30 feet. High hanging curveball and cover just a shade out in front. Mets earlier tried to deal for Colbert. He really hits him well. Here's the one strike pitch. Seaver goes low and outside with a slider one and one. 
Mets leading by two, but the potential tying run is at the plate and a dangerous hitter up. A 1 1 pitch. Fastball, a check swing foul ball. And the count, one and two. Lee thought the pitch got away from the catcher and moved on down to second base, but it was a foul ball. Colbert has struck out 65 times in his first 71 ball game. And the 1-2 pitch. Seaver misses again with a breaking ball low and outside. Two balls, two strikes. Lee at first base. The 2-2 pitch. Seaver again with a breaking ball. And Colbert starts the swing but holds up. That puts a count at 3-2. and two. So on the next delivery, Leron Lee will be running with the pitch with two men away here in the top of the fourth. Seaver ready? Now he backs off the pitching rubber and Lee shortens up his lead at first. Again, Seaver sets up. Runner goes and the pitch is low on its ball four and Seaver thought he had a strikeout. He went with a low outside slider and just missed. So two walks in a row now for Tom Seaver. Runners at first and second with two men away and Clarence Gaston coming up. Gaston was struck out his first time up. Gaston hitting 242. He has two home runs, eight runs batted in. Ben Seaver's first pitch to the right hand batter, a fastball swung on a miss, strike one. at one strike to pitch back breaking ball low and outside and the count one and one Seaver now has lost that great command he had through the first three innings and at the start of the fourth he has walked the two best hitters on the Padre Club pitching very carefully a one one pitch he gets a fastball by but it's outside two balls and one strike Gaston had one great hitting year for the Padres with 29 home runs back in 1970. Batted 318. Next pitch is a fastball. He has a hard swing but fouls it back. Two and two. In that year in 1970, Gaston had 93 RBI with his 29 home runs. Two balls, two strikes. And the pitch. Fastball again fouled off of Seaver with three straight fastballs. Count stays at two and two. Lee is at second base. Colbert at first. Two men away. And again the 2-2 pitch. And a fastball swung on and missed. And Seaver with a six strikeout. Retires the side. In the inning, no runs, no hits. Two walks, the first two players to get on, and two men left. And the score at the end of three and a half innings, the Mets two, the San Diego Padres, nothing. Well, no Met fan will want to be without the revised 1972 Met yearbook which is now available at Shea Stadium. The new features include two pages of Willie Mays, one of which is in four-color process and has wondrous Willie's fabulous career record. That lists all the statistics that earned him the label of a living legend. There's also a new two-page team picture in rich four-color that's suitable for framing and a new full-page layout of Rusty Scobb in addition to the color portrait of him in the first edition. The price? Still 75 cents at Shea Stadium and only $1 by mail. It is certainly why it's baseball's number one buy. The order by mail, please enclose $1 money order. Address it to Mets Yearbook, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York, 11368. And please don't send your request to either Lindsay, Bob, or me, because that'll only slow up the process. $1 to Mets Yearbook, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York, 11368. 
Duffy Dyer to lead off here in the bottom of the fourth, and the first pitch by Gary Ross is high as ball one. Duffy was struck out his first time up by starting pitcher Clay Kirby, who lasted two and two-thirds innings. Wildness got him out of there as he gave up only three hits, but walked four. Pitch back to Dyer, grounded to third, fielded there by Dave Roberts. The throw to first base retires Dyer. That'll bring up Tom Seaver. Mets leading two to nothing. Duffy batting at 276 before the out. Seaver hitting 175, but he has two home runs. Seaver batting for the first time against Gary Ross in the first pitch. Fastball high and away. It's ball one. Ross in his 26th relief appearance. He does not have the velocity of Clay Kirby, but he has been getting the ball over. He misses outside the ball off the glove of Pat Corrales. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes. He came in with the bases loaded with two men out and got Ted Martinez to ground into a force play and has retired Duffy Dyer here in this inning. The Cardinals-Cincinnati game has gotten off, and after one and a half innings, the Cardinals nothing, Cincinnati nothing. Cardinals have won seven straight, 14 of their last 15. They are in a virtual tie for third place, six and a half games back of the league-leading Pittsburgh Pirates. Scipio Spinks, five and four, pitching for the Cardinals against Grimsley, who has won five and lost two for Cincinnati. The Reds lead by one half game over Houston in the Western Division, and six and a half games over third place Los Angeles. Next pitch to Seaver is low on its ball three. Three balls, no strike. That is the only other day game in the National League. Chicago's at Atlanta at night. Dodgers at Montreal. San Francisco at Philadelphia. And Pittsburgh at Houston at night. Next pitch is in for a call strike at three and one. Balls, one strike. Here's the pitch to Seaver. And it's low ball four, and Seaver works. Walks. That is the fifth walk for the Mets in this game. First off, Gary Ross, it brings up Bully May. <laughs> Willie is 0 for 2 in this game. Struck out his first time up, grounded out to short his second. Batting for the first time against Gary Ross. Saver on first, one away, bottom of the fourth, the Mets leading two to nothing. And the first pitch to Mays is low, it's ball one as Ross starts off and misses with a fastball. Pat Corella trots the ball back to the mound and he has something to say to his pitcher. Corrales back. Seaver not being held on by Colbert. He's playing about two steps behind. Ross takes the sign. Sets up. Here's the pitch. Way outside. It's in the dirt and blocked by Corrales and Seaver stays at first base. Two balls, no strikes. Padres have won 24. They have lost 46. They're 19 games out. Mets one and a half behind Pittsburgh with a 42 and 27 record. And you stop to think about it, with all the injuries the Mets have had, their playing has been exceptional to stay that close to the Pirates. 2-0 pitch, low, and it's ball three. Three balls, no strike. On deck batter for the Mets is Bud Harrelson, and then it goes on to Wayne Garrett and John Milner. Three and oh. Mays checks to see whether or not the hit sign is on. Ross sets up. Here's the pitch. Mays takes a slow ball four, and again, the Mets have the walks to help their cause. Their second walk in this inning, and now runners at first and second with one out. It brings out Roger Gregg, the pitching coach of the Padres. The Mets now have had six walks in this game. For Mays, that's his 40th walk. He's tied with Harrelson for the club lead. Al Severson is now throwing in the bullpen for the San Diego Padres. Mets have had 
Nine men on base, six by walks. As they lead 2 nothing, And Roger Craig, one of the original Mets, talking with his pitcher, Gary Ross. Now the conversation over, and Roger, as he walks back to the dugout, says something to Lee Wire, the home plate umpire, but not derogatorily, just talk with him for a moment. Bud Harrelson, the batter. Bud started the rally in the third with a single to left center field. Bud scored the first run of the ball game when he was forced in from third base on a walk to Pergosi. And the pitch to Harrelson. It's on the inside corner. A call strike. Gary Ross, one and one in the year. Working in relief for starting pitcher Clay Kirby. One strike pitch. Breaking ball, it's outside. One ball, one strike. Seaver, short lead off at second. Mays behind him at first. And the 1-1 pitch bounced out toward the shortstop, Hernandez. He tosses to the second baseman for the force play at second on Mays. No chance for a throw on Harrelson going down the line at first, so... On the out, the Padres get their second out of the inning, but have runners now at first and third, and Wayne Garrett coming up. The ball was not hit hard enough for a chance for two. Garrett has singled and walked in this two times up. He also has scored a run. Garrett batting an even 200. Mets leading 2 nothing. Harrelson short lead at first, and the first pitch is high, ball one. Carlson had a stolen base in the third. It was his sixth in eight attempts. One ball, no strikes to count. Throw to first base, chases Harrelson back. No tag by Nate Colbert. Got back in plenty of time. Padres, of course, alert for a possible double steal attempt. Ross indicates he wants the signs roll over once again, so time called as Garrett steps out of the batter's box. One and oh the count. Garrett, a left-hand batter. And here's the pitch. Swung on and fouled into the stands. One ball, one strike. Ross got a fastball in tight on Garrett and jammed him as he fouled the ball off. Ross working very slowly. Now steps up in contact with the pitching rubber, gets his sign. Here's the pitch. It's in there for a call strike at the knees. Garrett thought the pitch was low. So Ross with the count at one and two. Let's take a good look at Harrelson now. This could be a running count. He edges off, draws a throw as the Padres are well aware that he might be going. The question is whether the catcher will throw through or whether he'll throw to the pitcher or whether he'll fake a throw and throw to third if Harrelson is running. Tough decision for Seaver. Again, the throw to first base. Again, Harrelson back. Winner at third has to be sure the ball goes through by the pitcher before he can make his break home on a double steal. If it comes off. Harrelson a good size lead. He does not go, and the pitch is low, and it's two balls and two strikes. One of the most interesting things about baseball is the anticipation of the different plays that can be put on. The opposition, of course, knows the situations. They have to guard against them and have to set up defensively to guard against it. These are the plays they work on in spring training and constantly. Two balls, two strikes. Harrelson is running. The pitch is hit out to left field. A fly ball to left. Aaron Lee with the glasses down is under the ball and he makes the catch and that retires the side. 
So we'll never know what would have been done on the attempted double steal as Garrett hits the ball to left for the final out of the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, two walks and two men left. And the score at the end of four, the Mets two. The Padres, nothing. Bicycles, bicycles, bicycles. That's what you'll find at Globe Supply. Not only do they have a large selection of Raleigh and Columbia bikes on display, but they will maintain a large stock throughout the summer. This means savings for you on 3 and 10 speed men's and ladies' bikes now at Globe Supply. They also have a good supply of accessories and parts, tubes, tires, seats, lights, generator sets, and many, many more. All at Globe Supply, 449 Broadway, Saratoga Springs. Generations of reliable personal service to Saratoga County homeowners provides the best reason for calling Ernst Brothers for that aluminum siding job you've been contemplating. Ernst Brothers still gives you dependable service backed by factory guaranteed materials. And where else will you find the head of the business himself, George Ernst, still available to give you a free estimate on any siding work? Ernst Brothers has given you three generations of service, and that's just the beginning. Ernst Brothers, 584-1859. Diego Padres come up in the top of the fifth inning, and it's Jerry Morales to lead it off, facing Tom Seaver, who has struck out six and walked two here so far this afternoon. Bob Skinner is the acting manager for the San Diego Padres in the absence of Don Zimmer, who is ejected from the game by plate umpire Lee Wire after he came out to protest a half swing by Jim Fergosi. Zimmer, of course, will be back for the second game of today's doubleheader. The ejection doesn't last through two games. Here's the pitch low. And it's ball one. Morales popped the second in the second inning. He's 0 for 1. Zero with a 1-0 delivery. Fastball it on the ground, a deep short. One big hop up to Harrelson. He plays it across in time. Morales has grounded out. We pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. has grounded out. We pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. Home of the New York Mets, WKAJ, in Saratoga Springs, 102.3 in your FM dial. This is Lindsey Nelson with Bob Murphy and Ralph Canner at Chase Stadium. Matt Corrales is at the plate and the pitch comes in high for a ball. One man out, nobody on base. Corrales bats number seven in the batting order for the San Diego Padres. He's a right-hand batter. Sevis pitch slider in there for a called strike. It's one and one. Enzo Hernandez, the shortstop, is on deck. Sunny afternoon at Shea Stadium for a 4th of July doubleheader. Here's the one-one offering. Fastball hit in the air. Toward second base. Garrett's on the outfield grass, retreating, and he makes the catch. Two men are out. That'll bring him into Hernandez. He's been up one time, and he struck out. Mike Caldwell, a left-hander, will be the pitcher in the second game of this doubleheader for the Padres. Gary Gentry will be pitching for the New York Mets. Then tomorrow night, John Matlack against Steve Arlen. Here's a pitch, sprung on and fouled off. It's strike one. Pitcher Gary Ross is on deck. That foul ball nipped Duffy Dyer, the catcher. He's getting immediate attention now. Tom McKenna, Met trainer. Here comes Yogi Berra out. Pergosi is down there. Duffy Dyer, Nick by the foul ball. Around the collarbone area. It's exercising the neck muscles a little. The indication is that you're going to be all right. Be adjusting the strap of the protector. Vera and McKenna go back to the Met dugout. The 
Padres are batting here in the top of the fifth inning with two men out and nobody on base. The Mets are leading by a score of two to nothing. Seaver checks with Duffy Dyer for the sign. And deals the pitch. Bunted on and missed for strike two. It's 0-2. is rippling the flag out toward right field. Here's Seaver's two-strike offering. Fastball foul back. It's out of play. 0-2. Action continues down the Padre bullpen with the number eight man in the order at the plate here now with a two-strike count. Seaver deals and it's high. For a ball, it's one and two. Vidar again flashes the sign. Pitch to the right-hand batter. Curve ball hammered on the ground to second. Taken by Garrett. He goes to Cranville and the side is out in order. Nothing across. And in the middle of the fifth inning, the score is the Mets two and the Padres nothing. Take it from Pee Wee on a baseball, the cover has to be top. It's the same way with the cover on your house. Snow, ice, rain, sun all add up to a solid beating your house takes every year. The best cover for it that I know is Devoe Acrylic One Coat. It does all the things you want a house paint to do. Protect, go on easy, look great. Devoe Acrylic One Coat, the modern house paint from the oldest paint company in America. Rainbow Cloud is sure to please, start from Devoe and stand at Sports fans, if it's happening in sports, you can bet you'll find it in the Saratoga, in the Tri-County News, or Sunday. You'll find the most total package of weekend sports, including all the late West Coast games in the Sunday edition. If you don't believe it, take a look at this week's Sunday edition. At the Saratogian Sports Department, they say, compare us to anybody. Make sure you're up to date on sports. Call the Customer Service Department in Saratoga, 584-4242, in Glens Falls, 793-7111, or 793-7177. Be a sport. Read the Saratogian, the Tri-County News, or the Sunday edition. John Milner is up to lead off now for the New York Mets. Hitting in the cleanup spot today, the Mets are batting here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Gary Ross working in relief of starter Clay Kirby, and this pitch is in for a call strike. Milner drew a walk in the third inning. He grounded out in the first inning. Cincinnati Reds got five runs in the bottom of the second inning. You go ahead with the Cardinals five to nothing through two innings. Slow curveball, and it missed the strike zone. It's one and one. Fergosi on deck. This is the 1-1 pitch. Curveball inside low, so it goes to two balls and a strike. Takes the sign. Deals 2 1, high and tight. Three balls and a strike to John Milner. Lost is a deliberate worker on the mound. Starts the motion for the 3 1 pitch. It's in for a call strike two. So the count is full now at 3 2. be a payoff pitch and it's on the way. In the air down the left field line, it's fair and be extra bases. It is a foul ball. Foul ball, an opposite field foul ball hit by Miller down the left field line. Brings him back with a full count. Miller moves back into the batter's box. Bad cock now, and here's the pitch. Hammered on the ground to second. Thomas has it, drops it, picks it up, plays the first in time to Colbert. And Milner has grounded out, second to first. 
One away, and Jim Fregosi is about it. He struck out in the second inning and walked on a 3-2 pitch in the third with the bases loaded to drive and a run. It was a check swing, situa- check swing situation. It was on that check swing that manager Don Timmer protested and was expelled. Late umpire has a tough call on the half swing. That pitch is in for a call strike. Most umpires will tell you it's their toughest decision. Because you see, when that ball gets in the area of the plate, the umpire's got to give all the attention he has to where the ball is. Matter of considerable concentration. Here's a pitch low. So that he is not all that adept at seeing what the batter is doing at that time. Now you and I, from a distance, watch the whole panorama because we don't have to tell whether or not the ball's in the strike zone. The umpire will tell us. Here's a 1 1 pitch, and it's low. 2 and 1. But the half swing just may not be in his field of vision. There's a 2 1 delivery. And for a call strike, it's 2 2. now. Rocks on the rubber, delivers 2-2, and it is inside. The count is 4-3 and 2 to Fregosi. Batting with one man out and nobody on in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Here's the payoff pitch. Fouled off. Clicked right off the handle of the bat as he was checking back on it, so the count holds full at 3-2. and two. have had only three hits in this ball game, but the four walks in the third inning provided them with two runs. They had only one base hit in that inning, a leadoff single by Harrelson. And Garrett, Milner, Fergosi, and Crane full walk. Payoff pitch. Inside, it's a walk to Fergosi. Third walk given up by Ross. Added to the four by Kirby. Gives them at seven bases on ball. Cranville is up. He has walked and flied to center. Playing first base today. Dave Marshall was in the lineup originally posted by manager Yogi Berra today. He was batting third and playing right field, but then reported an upset stomach and was scratched from the lineup. It is entirely possible that Tommy Agee will be in the Met lineup in the second game against the Padre left-hander. That pitch is low for a ball. Robert is the first baseman holding against runner Jim Fregosi. Ross sets checks, throws to first. Not in time. Fregosi's back. Lashing the bat around a little there as he waits. That's in for a call strike. One and one. Well, Severinson up and throwing again in the bullpen for the San Diego Padres. There's a one one pitch. Going on and dribbled up the first place on a foul ball out of play. Picked up by Corrales in foul territory. One and two. Before today's ball game, we were visiting with pitching coach Roger Craig of the Padres, who came up to the Dodgers in 1955, and he was saying that he won his first game as a Dodger. He came up at the same time that a pitcher named Don Besson did. And, of course, in the World Series, it was the Dodgers and the Yankees, and Craig won the fifth game of the World Series. It was the only world championship ever won by the Brooklyn Dodgers. Here's a one-two pitch. Curveball hit on the ground, foul up the first baseline out of play. Craig then on to Los Angeles with the Dodgers and was in the expansion draft, actually conducted in October of 1961 for the 62 season. And Craig was the New York Mets' third choice in the expansion draft. 
Here's the first pitcher that they chose. There's the one-two delivery. Swung on and fouled off. That's first choice was a catcher, Hobie Landry. Their second choice was an infielder named Emilio Chacon. Their third choice was Roger Craig. He went from the Mets to the Cardinals, was on a Cardinal World Championship team in 1964. He won a game in that World Series. Finished up his career with the Cincinnati Reds. Throw to first is not in time. Or go see back. Roger Craig managed at Albuquerque in the Dodgers, Dodgers system for one season. One two delivery, curve ball, and it misses, so it's two two. Ted Martinez is on deck. A lot of pitches thrown in this baseball game here today. Gary Ross with a runner going. Here's a swing and a high pop to left center field. Leron Lee flips the glasses. He's coming up. Makes the catch as Fergusi retreats, actually running backwards to first base. They had him moving on the pitch. Two men out. Martinez coming up. And a base hit and grounded into a force play. Martinez is a right hand batter. Mets are leading 2 nothing. They're batting in the bottom of the fifth. First game of a doubleheader. St. Louis Cardinals got a run in the top of the third. Going to the bottom of the third. Cincinnati 5, the Cardinals 1. This pitch in for a call strike. Lowell Palmer has to leave Scipio Spinks on the mound in the third inning for... St. Louis Cardinals. Ross Grimsley is going for Cincinnati. That's the only other afternoon game in the National League. Strike one pitch. Swung on line into left field and it is in there for a base hit and it is by Leron Lee. He gets a glove on it and now retrieves it and moving on to third is Fregosi and Martinez goes to second in this safe. Martinez got within about 30 feet of second base and suddenly came to a stop. By that time, shortstop Enzo Hernandez had the relay. And Martinez was somewhat surprised. Apparently then made the dash on in, hit the dirt, and was in safely. Leroy Lee slipped down in the damp outfield. It was a line shot as he got up close to it. He slipped down, and he did manage to get a glove on it to keep it from going by. The official score says make it a single and an error on the shortstop. That would presumably be for holding on to the ball as he got the relay. Here's a pitch outside as Duffy Dyer is being intentionally walked with first base open. Bob Skinner is running the Padre Club now, so this is his decision. With Seaver on deck, the number eight batter Dyer is being intentionally walked. The fourth, the fourth walk issued by Ross. First one of them intentionally. There's ball four, so Duffy Dyer goes to first, and the Mets have loaded up the bases. Two men are out, and Tom Seaver is at the plate. He struck out and walked. The Mets are leading 2 nothing, making a bid for more here in the bottom of the fifth inning. works straight away to the right-hand batter and it's high for a ball. Well, these Mets fans saw two runs walked in earlier by Clay Kirby. So when the first ball comes in high, the receiver with the bases loaded here. There's a swing and a ground ball in short. Second by Hernandez. He goes to Thomas for the fourth on Dyer. And the side is retired. Ball was hit hard by Seaver. Almost directly at the shortstop, so it is no runs. A hit, an error, and three left. The end of five innings, the score is the Mets two, the Padres nothing. Now, here are the bunkers Gene Stapleton and Carol O'Connor. The house we like the best 
wasn't the one we ended up buying. It was beautiful on the outside, but we found out that there were terrible termites everywhere. It would have cost us thousands of dollars to really get the house in shape. That's right, and we didn't figure on all the increases in property tax, maintenance, and other expenses. But we went to HUG and got some very good advice. Yeah, we were pretty lucky, weren't we, Archie? Lucky? No, we did. We wasn't lucky. We were smart. I know some people who never got as serious as us about buying a home. They've been having headaches ever since. Buying a home is a big deal. Learn about house hunting, property inspection, FHA insured loans, and the responsibilities of ownership in a free booklet called The Wise Home Buying Guidebook. Write HUD, Department HB, Washington, D.C., 20402. the Padres coming up here. It's the number nine man in the order scheduled, so they're going to send John Jeter up as a pinch hitter. John Jeter will bat for Gary Ross with Bill Greif now up and throwing in the bullpen. Greif's throwing in the bullpen. Jeter is at the plate. Seaver is facing the Padres here in the top of the sixth inning. Gary Ross went two and a third, allowed no runs, one hit, struck out none, and walked four, one of them intentionally. Jeter is a right-hand batter. Here is Seaver's pitch. Foul back and out of play for strike one. Jeter is hitting 231. He has five homers and 12 runs batted in. Came to the Padres late last year from the Pittsburgh Park in the Bob Miller deal. Here's Seaver's strike one delivery. Misses outside, so it's one and one. Today's baseball quiz has been posted. Only three players in the history of the National League have belted more than 51 home runs in one season. Can you name them? Now the pitch fouled off and out of play. It's a breaking pitch. Only three players in the history of the National League have belted more than 51 home runs in one season. Can you name them? Here's the one-two pitch. In for a call strike, it's 2-2. Two -two. Seaver offers 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and missed. Struck him out. Strike out number 7. One away with the Padres batting in the 6th inning. And Daryl Thomas is coming up. He is down 0 for 2. Bill Greif continues throwing down there in the bullpen, so apparently he will be the pitcher for the Padres when the Mets come up in the bottom of the sixth inning. The Mets are leading here by a score of two to nothing. Seavers pitched to Thomas. Bunted up a third baseline, and it's taken by Fregosi to throw on in time. He's out. As Thomas laid the ball down, and Fregosi came in charge, up and over in time. Two away, Dave Roberts is about it. Grounded out and popped out. 0 for 2. A fellow from the University of Oregon. The answer to the quiz is posted on the message board in the bottom half of the inning. Now the pitch to the right hand batter. Swung on and missed. It's strike one. Beaver offers. Fastball foul back. It's strike two. Duffy Dyer flashes a sign. Davis two strike delivery to young Dave Roberts. Fastball a little low. It's one and two. Two men out with nobody on base. And the one two pitch. Fastball swung on and missed. Struck him out. Eight strikeouts. Nothing across. Middle of the sixth inning. The score is the Mets two and the Padres nothing. Mr. James Stewart for the American Red Cross. On the early frontier, distances were great, winters were long, and you could count on your neighbors to help you. Today, things are different. 
And when you need help, where is the neighbor you can really count on? Who pitches in when there's a catastrophe? Who gets the word to a young serviceman that his daughter has just been born? Who makes sure there's blood when it's needed? Who teaches blind kids to swim? Who does all those things that most other folks never seem to have time for? Well, there's one neighbor close by, your Red Cross volunteer. Now, maybe you haven't got a lot of hours to give to the American Red Cross every month, but think, where do you fit in? Neighbor. Bill Greif is the pitcher. He is coming in for his 19th appearance. He has a record of three wins and 11 losses. He has lost his last eight decisions. Greif was in a starting role earlier, but went to the bullpen on the 26th of June and has been there since. He defeated Seaver back on the sixth day of Mays. He worked seven and a third on that occasion and gave up two runs on five hits. Drive came to San Diego from Houston in the deal that sent Dave Roberts, the pitching Dave Roberts, from San Diego to Houston. So Drive is working in relief of Gary Ross. Now he worked two and a third, allowed no runs, one hit, struck out none, and walked four, one of them intentionally. Tom Seaver, through six innings, has not allowed a base hit to the San Diego Padres. Seaver has struck out eight and walked two during his first six innings. The only two base runners the Padres have had were put on in the bottom of the top of the fourth inning. Leron Lee and Nate Colbert, who walked, and now Willie Mays is up for the Mets here in the bottom of the sixth. Mays is 0 for 2 in a walk so far today. And the pitch outside. The answer to the baseball quiz... Of the three players in National League history to hit more than 51 homers in one season, two are now met. The Cubs' Hack Wilson hit 56 in 1939, while Ralph Kiner hit 54 for the 1949 Bucks, and Willie May dropped 52 for the Giants in 1965. Here's a swing and a miss. It's one and one to Willie May. Willie's top home run production, 52 in 1965. The San Francisco Giants. That's a clear ball and for a called strike. One and two. Well, Counter twice hit more than 50. He hit 54 one year and 51 one year. Breaking pitch misses low and away. So it's two balls and two strikes to Mays with Bud Harrelson on deck. The Mets are leading the Padres 2-0, and this is the first game of a July 4th doubleheader at Shea Stadium in New York. 2-2 pitch. Swung on and hit in the head on the right field on a foul ball out of play. So the count holds at 2-2. Right past the sign. Here's the 2-2 delivery. Swung on, fouled off to the right side, out of play, and the count continues. Two balls and two strikes. Greif has walked down to the infield grass now to rub up the ball. Goes back up onto the mound. Here's 2-2 to Willie Mays. Curve ball and slam into left for a base hit. There. Picked up by Leron Lee and played back in Mays has a leadoff single left here in the bottom of the sixth inning. That brings up Harrelson, who is one for three. Harrelson's batting average for the season stands at 207. Bends forward to take his sign. Mays leading off the bag at first. Has a throw over. Mays is back safely. Nate Colbert, the first baseman, holding against the runner. Drive sets up now off the stretch, and here's the pitch. High and off the glove of Ketcher Perales coming back and moving on to second is Mays. Takes a wide turn, comes to skidding hard, goes back to second. Sliding as he does, Perales got the throw to third base. 
as Willie Mays put it on a little for the holiday crowd here this afternoon. Willie took a wide turn. Down there in front of shortstop, he came to a skidding hall, dropped a one knee. And then when the throw went to third, he got up and retreated, sliding back into second. It's a pass ball charged against Corrales, allowing Mayers to move up. Goes to one and oh now. See how the Mets play. Did they leave the sacrifice on and move Mays to third? Here's the pitch in Harrison Square. Watch it in there for a strike. And Harrison spins around. In the batter's box when the strike call is made. He is one and one. He was around in bunning stance. Gobert stays on the grass at first base now. Third baseman, Dave Roberts, hangs around the cut out of the grass at third. Mays leaves off the bag at second. This will be a 1-1 pitch. Harrison squares. Bunts and misses. It's in there. Actually tipped it back into the glove. I'll catch your Pat Corrale. Mark Schaefer, Al Severinsen throwing in the bullpen now. Severinsen and Schaefer warming for the San Diego Padres. Drive is the third pitcher they've used. The pitcher of record is the starter, Clay Kirby. Harrelson looks to sign, man. Eddie Yost to see if the bunny's still on. The count is one ball and two strikes, and at first base, Colbert has retreated now. Garrett's on deck. Here's the pitch, and inside to Harrelson. He was not bunting. He was ready to take the cut. So the count goes to two balls and two strikes. Bends forward again, looking for the sign. Willie Mays leads off the bag at second base. Here is the 2-2 pitch on the way. Curveball hit in the air to deep right field. Down toward the corner, Gaston over, one hands the ball. Mays tags at second, starts over to third. He's going to try to make it, and Mays is out at third base. Willie Mays is out at third base on the throw from Gaston all the way across to Robert. So it is a double play. As Harrelson hit the ball deep to the right field corner. There's Gaston. Went across, made a one-hand stab. May have tagged at second, moved to third, but Gaston's strong throw all the way to Roberts. A 9-5 put out as Mays went in in the cloud of dust and umpire Ken Burkhart called him out. Two away, nobody on. And Wayne Garrett coming up. Single walked and flied out so far. Left hand batter. Pitches a fastball riding high and tight. It's ball one. Now again, Bill Greif with the motion. That pitch is down to five for a call strike. It's one and one. The Mets two and the Padres nothing in the bottom half of the sixth inning. First of two scheduled here today between these two teams. Here's a 1-1 pitch. Swung on and popped up foul to the right side. Colbert is in foul territory waiting, and Nate Colbert puts it away, and the side is retired. No runs a hit, no errors, and none left. The end of six innings, the score is the Mets two and the Padres nothing. Know what the ladder of success is? It's the latter a house painter climbs when he's using DeVoe Acrylic One Coat house paint. With DeVoe Acrylic One Coat, you can count on a successful job every time, both in good looks and in sound protection for your home. What makes me so sure? Well, I've got 218 reasons, one for every year DeVoe's been in business. See your DeVoe dealer about Acrylic One Coat. Tell him Pee Wee Reese sent you. Rainbow colors sure to please, are from DeVoe and Stanley. Globe Supply, downtown Saratoga, is the place to go for all your gift needs, as well as hundreds of other items. Be sure to see the selection of GE appliances, including radios, toasters, irons, blenders, mixers, and beauty care items. Globe also carries corningware, electric clocks, and tape recorders. For your weekend picnic or vacation needs, shop Globe Supply, where you'll find barbecue grills, thermos bottles and jugs, styrofoam ice chests, and many other items. Globe Supply is open daily from 8.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Friday night until 9 p.m. San Diego will have the heart of the batting order coming up in the 7th. We pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. This is your New York Mets Baseball Station, WKAJ, Saratoga Springs, New York, 102.3 on your FM dial. Lee 
Don Lee, who has been among the batting leaders of the National League all year long, leading off against Tom Seaver. Here's the pitch on the way. Outside, ball one. Leron Lee has struck out and reached on a walk. He drew a walk with two outs and nobody on in the fourth inning. Nate Colbert is on deck and then Clarence Gaston. Inside and low, Seaver behind two balls and no strikes. Leron Lee is hitting at 309. And base hits, putting him up among the National League leaders. Left hand batter waiting, the 2 0 delivery. Hit in the air to center field, it's deep. Back goes Willie Mays. Willie's under it, makes the catch. And the crowd will be rising now with every out the time Seaver can post. The always dangerous Nate Colbert comes to bat. Colbert has struck out and reached on a walk. Leron Lee walked in the fourth inning, and Colbert walked in the fourth inning. They have been the only two Padres to reach base. The Mets lead two to nothing. We're in the seventh. Here's the pitch on the way. And a strike on the outside corner. Nate Colbert has always been a particular nemesis of Tom Seavers. Right hand hitter with a world of power. They play him around the left. Foul ball, straight back. And the count is strike two. Plate umpire Lee Wire throws the ball out of the mound that winds up on second base. One out and nobody on top of the seventh inning. Behind Nate Colbert in the batting order, Clarence Gaston. Pass Seaver checking with Duffy Dyer. Goes into his windup. The two-strike delivery. Curve in the dirt. One ball, two strikes. Cincinnati leading St. Louis 6-1 to one at the end of three and a half innings with Ross Grimsley pitching. Sibio Spinks was knocked out. The one-two delivery. Jamsey. Way inside. Two and two to Nate Colbert. Tom Seaver with a count of 2-2 on Nate Colbert. Now swings over the head. Around comes the arm. Foul back upstairs. No play. Cleveland leading Texas 2-0 at the end of 5.5. They lead on a two-run homer by John Lowenstein. Now Dyer setting up the target. Here's the pitch. And he held his swing just in time on a fastball high. The count is full, three and two on Nate Colbert. Minnesota and Boston, no score after three and a half. Seaver into his windup, the payoff pitch, struck him out. Number nine for Tom Seaver. On a curve on three and two, he gets Nate Colbert. Clarence Gaston coming up. Gaston has been up twice, twice been struck out. Once he was caught looking, and in the fourth inning, he went down swinging. Seaver was in double figures in strikeouts in his last start when he beat the Phillies 3-2. to two. He struck out 10. Had a foul ball back toward the crowd, no play. The Lions score. New York, two runs, five hits, no errors. San Diego, no runs, no hits, and one error. We're in the seventh. The infield and the outfield straight away. Swing and a miss. A two-strike count on Clarence Gaston, the right fielder. The on-deck hitter is Jerry Morales, the center fielder. Now Seaver working rapidly, starts his windup. Here's the pitch on the way, foul ball. Right straight back up against the screen, the count stays, strike two. Return throw gets away. Big crowd on a beautiful day here at Shea. It's the 4th of July, and we have a twin bill. The first game is in the seventh inning. The drama is really starting to build. The two-strike delivery. Outside, one ball and two strikes. Up goes the leg. Around comes the arm. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Hard slider way outside. Gaston badly fooled. Seaver getting a standing ovation as he comes off the mound. That is his tenth strikeout. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. At the end of six and a half innings, the New York Mets two, the San Diego Padres nothing. Hello, this is Warren Officer Brian Fuller of the Glens Falls Composite Squadron Civil Air Patrol. 
Did you know that the Civil Air Patrol is now in its third decade of service to the nation? And did you know that the local Civil Air Patrol has openings now for boys and girls 13 to 18 still in school for the cadet program? Many instructional programs are available covering a wide variety of subjects such as aerospace education, navigation and weather, first aid instruction, and even obtaining an FAA private pilot's license if you qualify. Men and women over 18 are also needed for the senior member program in such areas as youth counseling, communications, ground search and rescue operations, air observer, and others. If you have a special skill, many programs need qualified instructors. For further information, attend any Monday night meeting at 7 p.m. at the Warren County Municipal Center, just north of Glens Falls on Route 9. Or write to me, Warren Officer Brian Fuller, RD2, Box 34, Gansford. And the big crowd settling back now after the seventh inning stretch. John Milner hits against Bill Greif in the last half of the seventh. The Mets lead the Padres 2 to nothing. Tom Seaver has not given up a base hit. The windup by Greif and the pitch to Milner is high. One ball and no strikes. Jim Bergosi on deck, then Ed Cranville. Seaver just went through the heart of the San Diego batting winner. The 1 0 delivery, towering pop up on the left side of the infield. Enzo Hernandez, about five feet into the outfield, is under it and has it. One away, last of the seventh inning. If Tom Seaver can retire the next six straight, he will not have to contend with the heart of that batting order again. Jim Ragosi is 0 for 1. He drew a walk in the third inning with the bases loaded to force home the first New York run. Bill Greif delivers foul back up on the screen, strike one. In the second game here today, Gary Gentry will pitch against Mike Caldwell. Gary has always pitched very well against San Diego. He has never lost to them. Tall, rangy Bill Greif pitching in relief. Third San Diego pitcher. And a change that's inside to Bergosi. One ball and one strike. Mets have had only five hits, and they've been widely scattered, never more than one in any inning. New York scored twice back in the third when Clay Kirby walked four in a row. And a fast ball over the outside corner, one ball and two strikes. Ragosi arguing a point with Lee Wire. All five of the New York base hits have been singles. Pitching one and two. Foul ball back, no play, count stays one and two. A one-two delivery. Reach for and a high fly into shallow right. Second baseman Daryl Thomas backing into the outfield makes the catch. Fregosi retired on a high pop. Two outs and nobody on. Crane duel coming up. Eddie has flied to center, drawn a walk, fly to left, nothing for two. Cranepool drew a walk with the bases loaded, forcing in the second New York run back in the third. And a ground ball hit right at the second baseman, Darrell Thomas. He snaps the throw to Nate Colbert. The Mets go quickly in the seventh inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on, so at the end of seven... The New York Mets 2 and the San Diego Padres nothing. Are you sure you have the right checking account? Well, look to us. Yes, look to us at the Adirondack Trust Company, 473 Broadway in Saratoga Springs, for all your banking needs. We're a full-service bank. Look to us for checking accounts. At Adirondack Trust, we have a wide range of checking accounts that can help you in your financial life by paying bills and keeping records straight. Come in and let us help you choose the right checking account for you, depending on the number of checks you write each month. As a full-service bank, the Adirondack Trust Company has a complete range of services that helps you do all your banking in one convenient place. So look to us for help with the checking accounts, with savings, and with loans. Remember, helping is our business, helping people, helping business, helping our community. That's our business. 
And a reminder to look for the grand opening of our new office, the West Church office of the Adirondack Trust Company. Come in and look us over. It's all modern and it's all new. And we're looking forward to seeing you at our grand opening soon. That's the West Church office of the Adirondack Trust Company. Go to the eighth inning, New York leading San Diego 2 to nothing. And all of the attention here at Jay Stadium is focused on George Thomas Seaver. The Padres over the first seven innings, no runs and no hits. The center fielder, Jerry Morales, who bats right-handed, leads off against Tom Seaver in the top of the eighth inning. Morales has popped to second, bounced out to short. Kurt Bluffery has come out on deck as a pinch hitter. And Seaver's delivery, a high fly ball hit to left center field. Milner moving over, he's under it, and he makes the catch. Tom Seaver, at the start of this ball game, retired 11 in a row. He then walked Lee and Colbert, but retired Gaston. He has now again retired 11 in a row. The pinch hitter is Kurt Bleffery. Big left-hand batter. He is hitting for Pat Corrales. Bluffery, a left-hand hitter, waiting. The wind-up by Seaver, the pitch. Call strike on the inside corner. Tom Seaver has walked two, struck out ten men. The infield and the outfield is around to right. Here's the pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. The count is strike two. Larry Stahl, a left-hand hitter, an ex-Met, has come out on deck. And he is going to bat for Enzo Hernandez. The two-strike delivery. He struck him out. Eleventh strikeout for Tom Seaver, and he got Bluffery on three pitches. Now the ex bat Larry Stahl, a left-hand batter, hitting at 236, is going to hit for Enzo Hernandez. Warm-up action in the Padre bullpen. Freddie Norman is listing up. Gary Justat comes out on deck to bat for the pitcher, Bill Greif, if Larry Stahl gets on. Two outs and nobody on, top of the eighth inning. Seaver has cut down 12 straight. Here's the windup now by Tom Seaver. He double pumps. In comes the pitch. Swing and a miss. Tom going with his fastball. Seaver over the head, around comes the arm, and he holds on the swing. It is high outside. One ball, one strike to Larry Stahl. Seaver retired 11 straight, then he walked two. He now has retired 12 in a row. The 1-1 delivery. Swing and a miss. Blazing fastball by Tom Seaver. One ball and two strikes. Stahl, the pinch hitter, out of the batter's box for a moment. Now resets himself. Seaver working very rapidly. Here's the pitch. Inside and low. It's two balls and two strikes. Duffy Dyer keeping the tempo moving. Returns the ball quickly to the mound. When Seaver is in that good groove, he works in a hurry. The outfield with Willie Mays swings to right. Now the pitch on the way. Foul ball back toward the press level. No play. He went after a curveball. Flied to Milner, leading off here on the eighth. Bluffery, the pinch hitter, struck out. The count two and two on Larry Stahl. Here's the pitch on the way. Low and inside, ball three. First time in several innings, the receiver has gone to a full count. Full count on Larry Stahl, three balls and two strikes. Seaver starts his windup. Here's the pitch, ball four. It missed inside and low. And Larry Stahl goes down to first base. We'll have another San Diego pinch hitter. It will be Gary Justat. J-E-S-T-A-D-T. Batting at 250. Third walk given up by Tom Seaver. He had retired 12 San Diego batters in a row. Now he contends with a right-hand hitter, Gary Justat, hitting at 250. Working from the stretch, Seaver delivers. Ball one, outside and low. 
the infield. The Mets are straight away. Now Tom Seaver's closest friend, roommate on the road, Buddy Harrelson. Yells into him, slow down, take it easy. The pitch to just that. Down the middle, a ball strike, one ball and one strike. If Seaver gets by just that, in the ninth inning, he'll have Daryl Thomas, Dave Roberts, and Lee Ron Lee coming up. The 1 1 delivery, hit late and foul, back toward the crowd. It is one ball, two strikes. Seaver has walked three, a fan 11. Wayne Garrett shading toward the middle of the diamond at his second base position. Pitching one and two. Way up high. Good grab by Duffy Dyer. The Padres have had three base runners. Now Seaver wants to break the tension a bit, and he walks down off the mound and turns his back to the plate. Comes back up, toes the pitching slab, and looks in to read Duffy Dyer. Pitching two and two. And a foul ball down the right field line. It's coming over for it is Ed Cranepool. No play. It lands in the crowd beyond the reach of Eddie Cranepool. With two men away, everybody running on the foul ball. Larry Stahl goes back to first base. He walked on three and two. The count stays at two balls and two strikes on the pinch batter, Gary Justin. He is the fourth pinch hitter used by the Padres. Now the pitch. Fouled off. He just barely got a piece of it. It went against the chest protector of Duffy Dyer and ricocheted away. And Seaver down off the mound to make sure Duffy is all right. The leadoff batter, Daryl Thomas, who twice and three times at bat has tried to bump his way on, is waiting on deck. Now the stretch by Seaver. The 2-2 delivery... Foul back upstairs. No play, and the duel goes on. Gary just that, battling Tom Seaver. Little Fred Norman, a left-hander who had three shutouts in a row early in the season, is warming up in the San Diego bullpen. The bullpen is quiet for New York, but there's a lot of pacing out there as they sweat it out. Now Seaver in the set position. The 2-2 pitch. Fouled again. Back upstairs. No play, and we continue on. Ten and a half year history. The New York Mets have never had a no hitter. Seaver again eyes the runner. Here's the pitch. Ball three, high and inside. So Seaver, perhaps feeling the tension, has now gone three and two for the second batter in a row. Cranepool is not holding against Stahl. He will be running. There he goes. Here's the pitch. Foul ball. Back. No play. Seaver has had so much velocity on his fastball today. We have had many foul balls coming straight back up. Willie Mays leaning a couple of strides to right center against the right-hand batter, Gary Justa. Stall leading away. And there he goes. The pitch. Foul off. He took a half swing just trying to stay alive and fouled it off. And that might have been ball four had he laid off. So Tom Seaver working very hard here in the eighth. Two outs and one on. Larry Stahl on first. Three and two again on Gary Justin. Here's the stretch. Now the pitch by Seaver. Ball four. For the second time today, Tom has walked two men in a row. Just that earned that walk. He fouled off about five pitches to get it. Daryl Thomas is coming up. He is the leadoff batter. Has gone 0 for 3. Twice has tried to bunt for a base hit. Almost pulled it off in the sixth inning. A good play by Jim Fergosi. Nailed him at first base. He is a left-hand hitter batting out of a crouch. Two men are on base. The pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Seaver throwing smoke to the left-hand hitter, Daryl Thomas. Dave Roberts, the third baseman on deck, and then the Padres' leading hitter, Leron Lee. Once again, Seaver up in pitching position. Around comes the arm. Strike two call. Next 
two. Padre is nothing. This is the top of the eighth inning. Two outs and two on. Seaver retired the first two, walked the next two. And the two-strike delivery inside and low. A beautiful save by Duffy Dyer. Beautiful play behind the plate by Duffy. That could have been a wild pitch. Seaver trying to get too much on that curveball. Pulling down too hard. Duffy had to dive into the legs of the batter to come up with it. It's one and two on Darrell Thomas batting at 245. Thomas sprays the ball around, chokes up on the handle of the bat. And the pitch. Well hit drive to right field, hurrying back, hurrying back, Martinez. He's got it, and the side is out. Line drive to right, probably the best ball hit in the game. Martinez went back to take it. They're standing again, clapping for Tom Seaver as he heads for the dugout. He has not given up a base hit over the first eight innings. No runs, no hits, no errors, two left on. At the end of seven and a half innings. The New York Mets two and the San Diego Padres nothing. time you have some people over, serve them the kind of mixers you'd want them to serve you. Canada Dry. If you call to throw a party, throw it right. If you call to throw a party, throw it right. Canada Dry, it's a lemon. Canada Dry, tonic water. Norman will be coming in to take over the pitching. Bill Greif in relief. Pitched two innings, allowed no runs and one hit. He walked none and struck out none. Kurt Bleffery will take over behind the plate. Freddie Norman, who has won five and lost six, comes into the ball game. Well, in the ninth inning, Tom Seaver will be pitching. Dave Roberts, Leron Lee, and Nate Colbert. He'll have to do it the hard way. For New York, it'll be Teddy Martinez, Duffy Dyer, and Tom Seaver coming up. We'll be going to the last of the eighth inning now as the Mets come up to hit against little Freddie Norman to give you all the changes made by San Diego. Here's Ralph. Okay, Bob Murphy, we've got something going here. If you've got anybody that you'd like to see that final inning or hear it, you better stay with us and call them up. We're going to the bottom of the eighth and the Mets leading two to nothing. Seaver working on a no-hit, no-run game. And the first batter for the Mets is Ted Martinez as Fred Norman starts off. A bunt down the third base side. Ball picked up, but not in time at first base. As the throw gets away and now rolls into the tarp area, Martinez goes down to second base on the play. A perfect bunt down the third base side. Dave Roberts picked it up to the ball by the first baseman, Nate Colbert, and the ball went in the drum that holds the tarp, and Martinez down to second on the air. So the Mets have a runner at second base with no one out, and the batter coming up is Duffy Dyer. For San Diego, the second baseman, Jerry Justad, has taken over there. Moving to shortstop is Daryl Thomas, replacing Enzo Hernandez. The new catcher in the ballgame is Kurt Bleffery. Martinez now three for four in this ballgame. And the batter coming up is Duffy Dyer. Fred Norman, the pitcher, and the first pitch to Dyer as high as ball one. Fred Norman in the ballgame. There, charge to the third baseman. Roberts on the bad throw. Second error for the Padres. A ground ball hit to the shortstop. Thomas fields the ball, chases Martinez back to second base, gets his throw off the first in time for the out. That'll bring up Tom Seaver. Listen to the ovation. Tom Seaver.
Weaver getting a standing ovation. He has a no-hit, no-run game going. And, of course, the drama will unfold in the top of the ninth inning. He will have to pitch to Dave Roberts, Leron Lee, and Nate Colbert. So on the 4th of July, fantastic ball game. The first pitch is a curveball swung on a miss at strike one. Lever, of course, only leading by two runs, but he would like to protect all the energy that he can for that last inning. Here goes the runner, stealing third. The pitch is taken and it's ball four. And Martinez steals third base, his second solo base of the year. Martinez with a tremendous jump. There was not even a chance for a throw by Bleffery. So now with a runner at third, the infield will have to be brought in. Lieber would, of course, like to have more than two runs lead as he goes into that last inning. Mets have picked up two runs. They got them back in the third on two walks with the bases loaded. Now the infield is in. Here's the pitch to Seaver. And he takes low on it. Two balls and one strike. Fred Norman with a record of five and six. He is making his 19th appearance. Throws a screwball along with a curve and fastball. And the drama unfolding here. Here's a pitch to Seaver. He hits it foul into the stands on the first base side. The count. Two balls, two strikes. Bill Greif going out of the ball game. Worked two innings. Gave up one base hit. Allowed no runs. It took a spectacular play by the right fielder, Clarence Gaston, to get him out of a jam in the sixth inning. Long throw from right field to catch Willie Mays, who had tagged up going to third. After catching the outfield, a high pitch almost over the head of the catcher, Bleffery, at three and two. Three balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch by Norman. Seaver takes it high, and it's ball four, and he'll have to go to first base, which will be... Somewhat energy consuming. He gets his jacket, walks slowly off to first base. And now with runners at first and third and one man out, Willie Mays, the batter, we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. New York Mets Baseball is coming to you from WKAJ FM Radio in Saratoga Springs, New York. Ralph Kinder, along with Lindsey Nelson and Bob Murphy from Shea Stadium. The Mets leading two to nothing with runners at first and third. One man out. But the drama will be in the top of the ninth as Seaver has a no-hitter going. Here's the first pitch to Mays. It's high ball one. Mets have had five hits in this ball, six hits in this ball game, and they have picked up nine walks. In the bullpen, Al Sepperin in the right-hander and Mark Schaefer. Next pitch to Mays is high. And it's two balls and no strikes. Padres are playing their infield back at short, second and third. They are set up looking for a double play. Martinez on at third base. Seaver at first. Next pitch to May. Swung on a miss. Fastball. It's two and one. Mays has a base hit and three times up in this game. He also has walked. Now Fred Norman with his next delivery. Mays takes it high. It's ball three. Three balls, one strike. Norman unhappy with his last pitch as he gets the ball back from the catcher, slapping at the ball as he makes the catch. Now the signs are out. And at 3-1, the pitch to Mays. It is over the inside corner. He takes it for a call, strike two. And that fills the count out at three and two. Norman ready. Seaver at first base. He is not running. And here's the pitch. Ball four. And Mays walks for the second time. The tenth walk in this ball game for the Mets. It loads up the bases and brings up Bud Harrelson. Bud has a single and four times up. Now Roger Craig is coming out to the mound, and he has made the sign he wants the left-hander in the ballgame. 
<laughs> Left-hander Mark Schaefer is called in the ball game. He is making his 19th appearance. They have all been in relief. He has been against the Mets two times, working a total of one and one-third innings, giving up one hit, allowing no runs. He has no record for the season. So we have a break here as we wait for Mark Schaefer to come in the ballgame. He will be the fifth pitcher used by the San Diego Padres. So while we do have a few moments, we'll give you the schedule of the National League. One game in progress besides right here at Jay. At the end of five, it's Cincinnati six, St. Louis one. Scipio Spink started for the Cardinals. They had won seven in a row, 14 of their last 15. He was knocked out of the box in the third. Grimsley still in for Cincinnati. And on the schedule, the Cubs at Atlanta for a doubleheader. The Dodgers at Montreal, San Francisco at Philadelphia, and Pittsburgh against Houston. The Mets a game and a half back of the first place Pittsburgh Pirates in the Eastern Division. In the American League, the Yankees have a night game. They've won five straight. They'll be playing the Western Division leader of the American League, Oakland. Oakland at this point with a four-game lead over the Chicago White Sox. At the end of six and a half innings, Cleveland two, the Texas Rangers nothing. Rich Ann started for Texas. Paul Lindblad relieved him in the seventh inning. Mike Kilkenny going for Cleveland. He was relieved by Dick Tidro in the third. John Lawrence in a home run. At the end of five and a half innings, Boston won, Minnesota nothing. Ray Corbin against Lynn McLaughlin. Baltimore tied now with Detroit. Scheduled to play the White Sox in the night game. Detroit scheduled to play Kansas City at night. And Milwaukee scheduled to play California at night. So Seaver, who had gone to the dugout, now slowly walks out to second base. And he's got a lot of time to think about that ninth inning. Schaefer has an earned run average of 4.50. This is his 18th, make it 19th appearance. Norman going out of the ball game gets credit for one third inning to work charge with one run he also has walked two the bases are loaded with one man out and the Mets back in the bottom of the eighth Mets leading by a score of two nothing and the drama here being delayed by the pitching change Blake Kirby started the ball game went two and two thirds innings he gave up two runs in the third but two men out but Harrelson singled and then walks to Garrett Milner Bergosi and Cranebull saw the Mets score the only two runs they have in the ball game Kirby left the ball game after walking in the second run when he walked Cranebull on a 3-2 pitch and Gary Ross came in the Mets could not score any further infield is in one man away and time is in here's the pitch to Harrelson he takes a strike for strike one and drove one to the right field corner that was caught in the sixth. Turned into a double play as Clarence Gaston made a catch and fantastic throw to throw Mays out going from second to third. Here's a pitch back to the plate. Hit hard right at the second baseman. The runners back to their back, so no play there. And Jerry just that, taking that line shot from Harrelson for the second out of the inning. That'll bring up Wayne Garrett. Wayne has a base hit him three times up. Left-hand batter, the infield now dropping back with two men out. Martinez on at third, Seaver at second base, Mays at first. And the pitch. Garrett hits the looper out to shallow right and might drop in. Coming on is Gaston. He's going to get to it, and he makes the catch as Seaver rounds third and is held up by Eddie O. So the inning over, and we have the top of the ninth to go, a no-hitter in the process. In the inning for the Mets. No runs, one hit. There was one error. Two walks and three men left on. And the score. At the end of eight innings of play, the Mets two, the San Diego Padres nothing. Mr. James Stewart for the American Red Cross. On the early frontier, distances were great, winters were long, and you could count on your neighbors to help you. Today, things are different. And when you need help, where is the neighbor you can really count on? 
Who pitches in when there's a catastrophe? Who gets the word to a young serviceman that his daughter has just been born? Who makes sure there's blood when it's needed? Who teaches blind kids to swim? Who does all those things that most other folks never seem to have time for? Well, there's one neighbor close by, your Red Cross volunteer. Now, maybe you haven't got a lot of hours to give to the American Red Cross every month, but think, where do you fit in? Neighbor. It's the top of the ninth inning, and Tom Seaver working on a no-hit, no-run game. In the eighth inning, he had to work hard. He got the first batter, Jerry Morales, on a five-out of left on one pitch. He struck at left for a pinch hitter on three pitches, but then he walked. Larry Stahl in a 3-2 pitch, and Jerry just had in a 3-2 pitch, but he got Daryl Thomas in a fly ball to right. Here in the ninth inning, it'll be Dave Roberts, Leron Lee, and Nate Colbert as his three batters that he has to retire to pitch the first no-hit, no-run game for Met. And the first pitch to Dave Roberts is hit foul back into the stands out of play. Roberts is 0 for 3. Seaver starting off with a fastball, getting the strike. Seaver so far in the ball game has struck out 11. He has walked four. The pitch back to the plate, a fastball over the outside corner, a call strike two. Roberts was struck out his last time up on a high fastball. Seaver ready and the two-strike delivery. It is mounted slowly out to second base. Garrett fields the ball, throws the first one away. Tom Seaver against the Chicago Cubs. Went eight and one-third innings with a perfect no-hit, no-run game. It was spoiled on a single to left field by Jerry Qual. Little known, Jerry Qual singled the left field to break up his bid for a perfect no-hit, no-run game. Now Seaver with one away in the ninth. And the batter coming up is Leron Lee, a real tough man. Make it Jimmy Qualls, and Qualls now playing in Japan. Here's the pitch to Lee. It's a blue hit, base hit to center field. A broken bat base hit in the center field, and Seaver's no-hit game goes out the window. So Seaver once again has gone eight and one-third innings. He still gets a hand from the fans here who were on the edge of their seat. Ball off the hands in the center field for the first base hit for the Padres, and listen to the ovation for Tom Seaver. That brings up Nate Colbert. Colbert has struck out twice and walked, and of course he is a dangerous man, and the Padres have the time run at the plate. Here's the pitch. It is a fastball over a call strike. Once again, Seaver coming close, but not being able to get the break for the base hit. It was not hit hard. A broken bat single to center. No question about it. Slider back for a strike and strike two. Doug McGraw is loosening up in the bullpen for the Mets. Beaver now with a two-strike count. Working to Colbert. Here's the pitch. It is a slider outside. One ball and two strikes. Seaver sets up, and his next delivery, slider in the dirt, stopped by the catcher Duffy Dyer. Good play by him, and Leron Lee holds it first. Lee, one of the tough hitters for the Padres, batting at 308. He had, in his last time up on a 2-0 fastball, hit a fly to deep center. He walked in the fourth, was struck out in the first. But a base hit to spoil a no-hitter for Tom Seaver here with one out in the ninth inning. Now at 2-2, Seaver's pitch. It is hit hard to the shortstop. Should be two. Over to second in time. A double play, and the Mets win the ball game. The Mets win the first game of the doubleheader on the double play by Harrelson. Seaver loses the no-hitter, but picks up his 11th win as the Mets win by a score of two to nothing. In the inning, no runs. The only hit of the ball game. No errors, and no one left on base. That was the fourth one-hit ball game for Seaver in his career. He has never pitched a no-hitter. And the final score, the Mets 2, the Padres nothing. Head for Lake Lonely and the Club Circle Restaurant and Motel. Like a horse and carriage, the races followed by the club circle go together. Lunch, dinner, or maybe just a little snack of cheese and crackers or clams, steamed or on the half shell. You'll find the atmosphere most relaxing at the Club Circle Restaurant and Motel out Crescent Avenue on Lake Lonely. Come as you are.
I'm Jack Lemon, here to talk about emergencies and about Medic Alert. The Medic Alert emblem is an internationally recognized sign of serious medical problem or acute allergy. And it should be worn as a bracelet or neck tag by everyone who needs it. And that's very possibly someone in your family. If you need it, wear it. If you see it worn by someone who needs help, call Medic Alert, Turlock, California. For further information and for application, write Medic Alert, Turlock, California. Well, a great ball game pitched by Tom Seaver. He lost the no-hitter as he did back on July 9th. In 1969, when Jimmy Qualls singled the left field with one out in the ninth inning. That time, it was a perfect game that Seaver was working on. He has written a book titled The Perfect Game. And here today, with one man out of the ninth inning, the same situation, Leron Lee, with a broken bat base hit the center field, broke up his no-hit, no-run game. Seaver got a double play off the dangerous Nate Colbert to pick up the double play that ended the ball game and gave him his fourth one-hit ball game in his major league career. It has to be a heartbreaking experience for Tom Seaver, but at the same time, the Mets win the ball game, pick up a half game on the Pittsburgh Pirates, and Seaver coming up with his 11th victory. He's lost four this year in one of the great games that he has pitched in his major league career. The Mets got the only runs in the ball game in the third inning when, when two men out, Bud Harrelson singled the left center field, stole second base. Wayne Garrett worked out a walk in a 3-2 pitch off starting pitcher Clay Kirby. And with runners at first and second, John Milner walked in a 3-1 pitch to load up the bases. Jim Fergosi, with the count of three balls and two strikes, took a half swing, but held up in time. The home plate umpire, Lee Wire, called it ball four. The Mets had their first run of the ball game. He was supported by first base umpire Andy Olson in his call, and Don Zimmer coming out to protest. And a hard, long protest was ejected from the ball game. After that, the bases still loaded. A run in. Ed Cranepool walked in a 3-2 pitch to give the Mets their second run of the ball game. The Mets could not score after that. They left 13 men on base, but the two runs enough for Seaver to pick up a shutout and a 2-0 victory. Winning pitcher Seaver now with a record of 11 wins and 4 losses. The losing pitcher was Clay Kirby. His record stands at 5-8. and eight. And the Mets winning the first game of the doubleheader. They have moved to one game back of the Pittsburgh Pirates who play tonight against Houston in the Astrodome. The line score of the ball game will be given to you in just a moment. But right now, here's a word from right. This is Bing Crosby about a very painful subject, arthritis. How often have you heard a health message that you felt was meant for the next person? What I have to say might be meant for you. Arthritis is the nation's number one crippling disease. It respects neither age, nor sex, nor race, nor occupation. It can strike at any one of us at any time. And when you get it, unless you do something about it, the right something, arthritis can cripple as well. Well, that's why the people at the Arthritis Foundation are doing something about it. The research supported by the foundation has produced new methods of treatment to help alleviate pain and suffering. But their real goal is to find the cause and a cure someday. They need your help. Who knows, you might even be helping yourself. So support your local Arthritis Foundation chapter and Arthritis Research by sending your contribution now to Arthritis 1972, Beverly Hills, California, 90210. And thank you very much. The New York Mets won their 43, 43rd ball game, and they now have lost 27 for a one-game deficit to the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Padres in losing now with a record of 24 and 47. In the second ball game, the Mets will try to win their third doubleheader. They have won two, they have lost one, and they have not split any so far this year. It'll be Gary Gentry in that second ball game. His record stands at three and six. And Mike Caldwell will be going for the Padres. He has a record of two and four. In that first ball game, a one-hitter pitched by Tom Seaver, and the base hit coming with one man out in the top of the ninth inning. It was hit by Leron Lee, a looper off a broken bat in the center field, and the only base hit of the ball game. We'll be back with more about the ball game in just a moment. 
this is George Burns introducing the Navy three-year guarantee. It's for guys 17 or 18 years old who'd like a choice in deciding what kind of work they do and where they do it. Here's how the Navy three-year guarantee works. You can come in the Navy for three years and they'll guarantee you at least two things. The first, your choice of either the East Coast or the West Coast as a place to work out of. And second, your choice of sea duty, which means you'll be seeing a lot of the oceans of this world. Or work as an airman recruit, which means you'll be seeing a lot of airplanes. Maybe even be on an aircraft carrier. Now, where else could a guy your age get a deal like this? For only a three-year commitment. Certainly not in private industry. You know you should see your Navy man soon? He'll tell you if you qualify for the Navy three-year guarantee. You see, today's Navy helps you be what you want to be right now. It's a fantastic ball game, and losing on a base hit, the no hitter, with one man out in the ninth inning. In the second ball game, as we mentioned, Gary Gentry will be going against Mike Caldwell, and the Mets, if they can win two, and the Pirates lose, will be in a virtual tie for first place. The line score of the ball game: the Mets two runs, six hits, no errors, 13 men left on base. The Padres no runs, one hit, two errors, and four men left on. We'll be with you in about 20 minutes for the second ball game when the Mets meet the Padres. The final score again, the Mets 2, the Padres nothing.